What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the season six grand finals for Division A. NGS is the league, and Queen's Consorts versus Dread Pirates is the match. Tonight, joining me is a very special guest, not Paradox. How are you tonight? I'm doing pretty good. So this is going to be a pretty interesting one. We know these have uh, these two teams have been scrimming against each other a lot. They are the scrim partners. So these they're going to be trying to sneak out something that the other team doesn't know they can do, yet they know everything that they can do. So I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a fun game. Me too. I'm very excited also. Uh, you know, just already with the map picks and bands, uh, the strongest map, I think, for Dread Pirates was banned. I'm going to go over that quickly. We can see that uh, Queen's Consorts actually decided to choose hero pick first, so uh, they did ban Dragonshire, which is the infamous Dread Pirates map. Uh, Dread Pirates banned Cursed Hollow and then picked Battlefield of Eternity, which is where mm. we'll be heading for game one. Super exciting, super fun map. Yeah, no, definitely. Battlefield of Eternity is one of a... It's an interesting map because it's mainly about team fights. It's the team that's going to be handling how they do their fights the best. I mean, they're not going to need to worry too much about macro play. There's only so many things you can do in macro on this map. A couple camps here and there for both teams. But overall, it comes down to team fight, team fight, team fight. A little bit in the draft because you can draft a little bit more race. If you win a team fight and have no race, then the enemies have time to get back to life and take a fight. Uh, but at the same time, the the challenge of it is trying to figure out a good mix between race as well as uh, team fight. So overall, it should be pretty good of a game. I am uh, definitely ready for this one. <laughs> Me too. We should be getting started rather soon. Great. I, I agree. Just quickly, I did correct that map tool. I selected Infernal Shrines instead of Battlefield of Eternity as the pick, if anyone... Uh, wanted to call me out on that. It's been fixed. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see where we are. Yep. We are about ready. Just making sure that the teams are good to go. And then we'll get into this game. Looks like team one is ready. And... They are saying that I am really quiet. How about now? Receiving feedback that I am super quiet. Yes, I'm wearing a sweater, a hoodie, in uh, in the middle of Las Vegas in the summer. Yeah, don't I mean, me. yeah, don't add don't him. At We're me. both in Vegas, <laughs> and the weather is bipolar. It was cold, almost raining. Now it's sunny yeah. and windy. Like, you know, we could get a monsoon. Earlier, earlier it was like 60 degrees outside, so right. I was cold. I put on <laughs> double socks, and I put on a hoodie. Again, don't at me. Anyways, we're getting into game number one on Battlefield of Eternity. The common bands that we've been seeing. Now, these teams, again, they know what heroes each other play. So I'd imagine we're going to be seeing mostly target bands. Likely, yeah. uh, maybe a Sylvanas band might be seen. We might see a Tyrande band coming out. Maybe a Lucio. These are all heroes that are very popular with their teams that they like to play. Uh, Artanis, strong on the map. Strong uh, for a few people on this, these teams. Yeah. Oh, anything strange you might be expecting to see from these teams or any hmm. any specific bands you might expect? You know, the Artanis ban was not unsuspected. The Jaina, I think there's really nothing out of the norm here that is played by either side. Maybe a Varian ban. I feel like Dread Pirates does like to pick Varian on this map based on what I've seen. But there's that Sylvanas there's band, Sylvan, band that you're yep. talking so about. A couple target bands. But uh, outside of that, we probably won't be seeing a Toronto band only because uh, we've got a couple different people than, than we're normally scrimming with them. But it's also been a while it's since Zeratul. I've watched their scrims. Zeratul, pretty early coming out. He's always solid on uh, he's solid on really any of these team comps. So uh, excited to see that happening. Um, and I, I always... Zeratul fights are always interesting because all it takes is one good void prison. So it, it could be if that gets whiffed and the whole fight turns into chaos. 
Anubarak right. and Li Ming great together because Li Ming An Anubarak counters Li Ming's damage, but then Li Ming counters Anubarak's cocoon. So having them both in the same team, very, very powerful. Ember I mean... is getting her blaze and nice. Yawner's on Hanzo. I think those are also very strong for the map. They're they're drafting heroes that they're all great with, as well as heroes that are great on the map. I'm again like this is it's looking to be a really, really good game one. Definitely. Uh, for those of you watching, I am having technical difficulties. My camera fell. <laughs> Anna band, yeah. Anna band, yep. Definitely. Uh, pretty good with. I mean, either either way, it's just kind of takes away a major piece from the enemy team. I mean, both teams are looking at their healers right now. Malfail does counter Blaze, so uh, I think Ember's sitting over there going, "Okay, I don't want to get smashed by this uh, by this." this uh what's it called uh mouth ale so as long as yeah. she can hold her lane up top then it should be pretty good well i'm curious and now we're on to these two picks we should probably see a healer coming out here yeah, i'd like to sure. see maybe a malfury uh there's a toronto so there full blow up comp they want to just hit him with the anubarak hit him with the stun from the toronto reduce the armor leaming rainer blow someone up so definitely going for that that means that we're likely gonna be seeing the combustion to counteract that drop the combustion whoever gets stunned maybe vp a couple targets get them into the bunker not the combustion the bunker i'm crazy get the bunker <laughs> jump bump them into the the bunker but we still need the healer out from this side joanna and malfurion so we do see the nice. malfurion he gives the cooldown reduction to hanzo gives the mana to hanzo as well as just large amounts of heals and a lot of different targets really beefy team actually from them pretty strong against these blow up comps it's gonna be hard to blow up any of their tanks unless they can get something that's like like a tykist really melt the high health uh but that's they need a solo laner uh so they need to pick something that can do a bit of percent health damage maybe an imperious would actually be really strong uh you can do some there we go. There There's the Imperius. So he's got that percent health. He's got a lot of sustained damage, a decent amount of burst damage, as well as he brings exactly what their team needs. Not only that, but if they can CC them down for a little bit after level 10, if he can ult them and hit them with all six of those uh, spears, it does so much damage. Yeah, that would be that would be nice. Uh, so which draft do you like the best here, Paradox? I mean, in general, we've got a blow-up comp versus a comp that's really good against blow-up comps. So I, I really think it could go either way. I think the challenge with uh, Queen's Consort right now is that they don't have a lot of race. So what's going to end up happening here is that they need to make sure that they win every single team fight on defense and get to level 16. If there's even if they even lose two objectives in a row before 16, then they're probably done. But if they can make it to 16, I would say that Queen's Consort has this game. Uh, but, I mean, at the end of the day, you've got a new Brock and a blow-up comp. It only takes one kill at the end of the game to really uh, start pushing the lead. So I think it could go either way. But is there one that's sticking out to you? Uh, no, I know that Queen's Consorts loves to brawl. So forfeiting the new Brock on their side for a Zera tool to me is interesting because... Hollis has played an exceptional Anubarak throughout this season. And so, uh, yeah, not too sure. All right, we're into the game here. All righty. So I will go through and introduce the blue side. So on blue team, we have Queen's Consort with uh, Doc Holliday, who is playing uh, Malfurion. We have Hollis, who is playing Joanna. We have Yonners, who is playing... Hanzo, we have Mayog, who is on Zeratul, and we have uh, Ember, who is on the Blaze. On to the red team. Yes, and on the red side, on Tarande, we have Mystic. Sir Stiggles is playing that Lee Ming. Rainer, played by Slithering One. Delurker on Anubarak. And Bat Mary on Imperius. This is Dread Pirates. Game one, best right. of five. Grand Finals Division A. So at the start of this map, generally what you want to be seeing is you want to be seeing uh, both of the teams look to getting any sort of lead, any sort of pressure. If they can get earlier camps, that's always good. But generally, it really comes down to uh, playing your comp out, trying to get anything that you can get. And in this particular case, I'd like to see a... Um, I'd, I'd really like to see a huge advantage. Look at that damage Holy from that on that Hanzo. Holy Yeah, that um, was instant. I'd like to see 
a huge amount of advantage on this bottom lane, starting off by the um, the the Li Ming just hitting the towers over and over and over. We've got the Beatles that are going to be on to uh, the Anubarak. So I'd really like to see that. Just a huge amount of pressure. And as long as we can get that pressure off early game, then they're going to be able to dominate before Zeratul gets scary. Because Zeratul, yeah. as we know, doesn't really get scary until 16. So I really want to see uh, if they want to win this at all, they need a huge advantage before that 16. So that's really what Dread Pirates needs to be doing in the early game. All Queen's Consort needs to be doing, clearing waves, making sure that they don't lose any major experience advantages, any major kills, get to level 16, and then win in the late team fights. They win one or two objectives, they win the game. Right. So both these teams have different strategies. An asymmetrical game is what we're going to be seeing right now. Which is what oh. I love, but uh, Malfurion is the first to go down. The side wall is already taken out, and so is the bottom tower here. It looks like Dread and Pirates... And they're going straight onto this camp, yeah, too. Yeah, heading directly over there uh, you know, to pick that up. We are Definitely. at about almost two minutes in. Teams are going to be eyeing those bruisers relatively soon as we get close to the objective, maybe not capping them. I want to check out top lane, though. Looks like red side is pushing a little bit more forward, but they're both very full in health, full in life. And we do see that Queen's Consorts has already begun their bruiser, most likely uh, to not cap it, but rather clear bottom lane and then rotate to the objective. I'm excited for this first fight. Yeah, definitely. The first fight's going to really show us a lot. And if if Queen's Consort could even hold their own in these early fights, they're going to be dominant in the late game. So it really comes down to getting uh, any sort of advantage. Uh, and honestly, so both teams pick up the camps they were supposed to pick up. Round Bruiser time, we see that immediately we have Queen's Consort going on defense with maybe just the Hanzo on the race. This is uh, actually, it looks like they're spreading out. They want to clear this camp up pretty quickly so that they can go on defense and still be okay. But we've got a, a big group coming in from Dread Pirates. They really want to go in. They want to dive right in onto this Malfurion and see if they can blow him up. Uh, a lot of damage going on to Malfurion, but it's not going to be enough. On a defense, they may go for another one of these again, and we'll see at least how they do this. The one thing I know about Queen's Consorts is that they calculate their engagements. You know, it's not just, oh, okay, let's dive in. It's, all right, let's back up. You go this way, I'll go that way, and let's, you know, attack this target. And I really love that they do call those targets out, and we do see them trying to engage a little bit. Roots coming out. Uh, but, you know, Dread Pirates does have, have the Immortal on their side for that engagement. So... Half time is where it's at. Mm -hmm. And this time, we've got to look at the teams that race faster. We've got a Rainer who has the uh, Exterminator talent at level 1. That means 50% more damage to minions, mercs, and monsters. And just so we know, the Immortal is considered a monster. So that's 50% more damage. 100% more while his Inspire's on. So they do have the race, even though they, uh, they are against a Hanzo. That Rainer plus the armor removal plus the uh, the Li Ming is an incredible amount of race. Uh, right on here first, Immortal is going to Dread Pirates, and they are pushing hard with this Li Ming, throwing everything that she's got. A decent amount of damage coming out from the Rainer, and they're not really trying to take a fight here. They're just sieging as hard as they can, trying to open up some areas and see if they can get this fort on the first Immortal of the game. Yeah, Delurker just kind of sliding in with no intention of actually following up <laughs> um but it, they'll easily get this top fort here um and it looks like everyone will live to see another day really playing Definitely. it carefully here and this is i mean it's actually calculated from both teams i mean both of them are looking at what they need to do here and it looks like they're actually going for a bait for this instead. They can go for a lot of damage on a Joanna, but unfortunately, they are burst, and Joanna has way too much survivability. This could be really bad and really yeah, good Delurker's for Delurker's looking for very concert. low. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Slithering one is barely making it out, but those Qs coming out from Tyrande are just saving his life. Hanzo getting some Definitely. extra damage, but not enough to take him out. That was close. That was close. Almost a pick. It definitely, definitely was. Now, with their... 
sieging early game comps that they have, what they should be doing right now is swapping lanes with Imperius, letting Imperius go to the lane that doesn't have the fountain anymore, so Imperius can really bully the blaze, while the rest of the team it goes down in the bot lane. But it looks like they're not actually going to be doing that. I think they're going to be going for this camp. Uh, Ooh, Bat Mary really is looking very low, move, bot. But... Mayog and Ember, sorry to interrupt, oh, getting no, that no kill on Imperius immediately. Yeah, Zeratul, so terrifying. Definitely, and he's going to only get scarier, too. I mean, that's the, the crazy part about Zeratul, is once he hits 16, it's going to be absolutely crazy. Yeah. All right, so we have 25 seconds left until the Immortals spawn. About 15 seconds on both bruisers. Uh, Dread Pirates rotating bot to clear this wave as one. Um, Queen's Consorts just having a powwow top not really rushing to get to their bruiser. Imperius is kind of floating around the area. Um, Ember is pretty vulnerable right here until her team gets there, and Bat Mary does go in. This is really close to the new turrets that have just been added into Battlefield of Eternity, and I don't know if these are the fights that uh, the Dread Pirates really want, and it looks like Dread Pirates is going to be having, they're going to be losing Rainer, Slithering One's going down, and they're way too low to fight. Now... Queen's Consort is in such a good spot. Yeah. They took the calculated fights. They made sure that they didn't lose anything major. And now, the closer they get to 16, it's going to be even harder for them to come back from any of this. And it looks like we've got Hollis just simply checking to see if they're at there and then goes back mm -hmm. on to just defending a little bit. Nothing too crazy. While we do have the race coming out from uh, Hanzo as well as Zeratul. It's not, uh, Hanzo definitely is good race, but Zeratul doesn't add too much. Yeah, they're and a getting lot of pressure being applied <laughs> by these bruisers as well. Right, they're they're taking every opportunity they can to add pressure. Like even before coming back to burn the immortal, they made sure to finish clearing that wave bot so the camp can push. Um, it's very calculated here, and they definitely did manage to get that immortal down. Just one pick uh, really threw dread pirates off their game for the second Definitely. immortal they they went for a very greedy pick forgot that the new turrets were added onto this map took way too much damage from the turrets and they just couldn't do it anymore so we do have an immortal with a half shield just so everyone knows the shield is as long as he has a ranged attack so as we can see right now the immortal is firing a ranged attack making it harder to dps but with a ranger with a uh rainer as well as a Li Ming, they should still be able to break the shield relatively quickly and then get right on to dealing some more damage and we are tens now, so we may see some fights with yeah. some ults out. Uh, Queen's Consort could take a fight here if they want to, as the Anubrox's not there to really help. And there yeah. is a root going out. And Hyperion possibly. comes out too. Uh, zoning like Queen's Consort's ult. back. Cocoon used. Oh, we've got a cocoon. A lot of damage onto uh, this Malfurion might go down, but a VP stops the entire team from following up on that cocoon. So while the VP was used defensively, uh, it still was able to make sure that they could keep their team alive. So pretty solid call on that on that Void Prison. Yeah. And now there is a Bruiser available here. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is the best time to get the Bruiser. This I last time they so. didn't have the Bruiser to push, and once again, they're likely not going to have the Bruiser to push. If they can't clear it fast, they might also get invaded here. It doesn't look like they're going to go for it. I personally, if I was on Queen's Consort, I would let them take this Bruiser right now because we could just clear it for free and then we can push and take top. And it allows us to get closer and closer and closer to this late game that we want to get to. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I will say about Queen's Consorts is those roots... Oh my gosh, wait, hold on. Blaze is getting stunned and just blown up here, bottom lane. Uh, not a wise place With to be. With that kill... Yeah, with that kill, they could take this fort for free. So that yeah. is pretty good. I, mean, I don't know if this is going to definitely bring him in the game, give him that advantage, but it, it certainly helps. Ooh. Ooh, a lot of ults being used yeah. immediately. A lot of ultimates, a lot of damage coming out just in sporadic bursts from that Zeratul. It's terrifying, I'm sure, for Tyrande, who, you know, with her heals, does need to attack to cool that down. And when it's happening so quickly, it's hard. It's hard to catch up. But just, just to go over ultimates really quickly, since we're kind of in a lull here in between, uh, this bottom siege is available. But for the sides of Queen's Consorts, we have Bunker from Blaze, Void Prison by Zeratul, Dragon's Arrow from Hanzo, Blessed Shield. Oh. Can you hear uh -oh. me? 
I can hear you. Did you get disconnected from the game? I am not sure. Are you able to still cast while I figure out what's going on? Now we have Joanna who's going to get blown apart, and the fight's going to start going in the side for uh, for Dread Pirates here. And it looks like they'll be able to take the the next Immortal as well. This should be the third Immortal in the game. Second Immortal for for uh... I'm back. <clears throat> And I You're missed back. it all, but it looks like Dread had, Pirates got this some, immortal. Definitely. We had some really good fights. Uh, it, it pretty much VP went down at the same time that Hanzo Arrow went down. Hanzo Arrow went right over everyone. And then the full health Dread Pirates group came out, took the fight, took the immortal. And now they're pushing with this next immortal as well. All right. For those of you in chat, we are back up. Thank you for your patience. Fort goes down. Those roots are excellent. Uh, definitely put down at the appropriate time to just let Queen's Consorts get behind this wall and fight under this keep. But the Immortal is going down pretty quickly. Yeah, it um, definitely. It is blowing apart. We've got uh, some beetles coming out. A little bit of an engage. We immediately cocoon the, the Malfurion. They have no healer. And we have an ult coming out from Imperius. The Imperius is going to throw off his ability to see if he can take out the uh, the Malfurion. But he gets silenced by the Malfurion. VP stops the, the keep from being taken and sets up a good fight for them to take out a few oh, people. We get goodness. one reset from the Li Ming onto another reset from the Li Ming. Keep still comes out in favor of Dread Pirates. Wow. Definitely a solid fight for both teams, but unfortunately they're just not at that 16 for Queen's Consort to really defend yet. They shouldn't have given up the Immortal so easily or at least raced it to try to at least get it lower. Uh, and now we see that that reset potential, that burst potential. And I really like that backline cocoon into the Malfurion. They just need to make sure to CC him faster when he gets out because he got that Twilight Dream off and it was enough to stop uh, the majority of the damage that was going to end up killing him. But overall, I mean, we saw how clean those fights can be from Dread Pirates. Yeah, they can definitely defend. But when we look at this map, we see, you know, just one structure left here for Dread Pirates or for Queen's Consorts. Dread Pirates is showing pretty strong with their structures still up and available. But as we know on this map, you know, get 16, get that next Immortal when a team fight and it's just a snowball effect if you're able to do that. I think that's what Queen's Consorts is looking for, but Dread Pirates is looking to engage. Five Definitely. Looks like they're just right going here. for the keep. They have yeah. 16s, they have double camps. They're going right for a keep right now. And it's very interesting. I mean, they're all full health, full mana, whole level lead. Uh, there's there's catapults pushing bot lane. They're double camp pushing top lane. They definitely can go for this if they want to. We have uh, Slithering one. He's breaking that sidewall in case we want the Anubarak to go in. But they see the Immortal spawning. They say, you know what? Let's just get a full health Immortal. Push it in with it. We've got to keep last time. We can get a keep again with it. So they're going yeah. straight for the race. And I mean, this is a good chunk of race. We have the Tyrande removing the armor right as she sees the damage going out from the Li Ming, right as she sees the W going out from the Raynor, and they melt that down extremely fast. Yeah. Queen's Consort's down here just looking for an engagement, but Johanna is the one in the cocoon, cocoon this time, and Mayog able to blink out of there, but that stun comes out in the roots. Bat Mary using the ultimate, Ember looking to get out, uh, using her D <laughs> for some extra protection. And nothing, nothing to report as far as deaths are concerned from that little fight there. 
uh, level think, <laughs> level sixteens are not online yet for Queen's yeah. Consorts. Definitely, I think Dread Pirates was just like you know what we still have one opportunity to fight before they have sixteens. Even though we race so much faster than them, we should at least give it a shot. So this right. time, level sixteens on both teams. However, we do have the Immortal Queen's Cons are going in for the fight right now. Hanzo Arrow into the uh... oh into a VP. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and a bunker. I don't know if that was the right call right then. I mean, if, if Imperius can get out here, oh, Ooh. he gets gets yeah, set by the two Twilight kills. Dream. Great time to fight. That was honestly their best chance. They needed to fight before the Immortal was fighting uh, and was up. Now, this is still a full health, full shield Immortal. If if Dread Pirates wants to, they could just add a little bit of siege and pressure a keep, or they could play it safe here and simply just back off and just go for soak push out bot lane and not worry about taking another fight but we see the level 16 team fights now from uh queen's consort i mean they literally will just throw out one ult into a vp into a stun from blaze into a bunker to make sure that they don't die and there's no way that there's really there's really no counterplay to it other than making right. sure that your team is spreading out and engaging on them because if you can engage on queen's consort then the vps be used defensively and it the entire fight shifts but for now it's it's all about uh which team can engage on which team well queen's consorts is looking to hunt dread pirates johanna gets in the cocoon again uh, as more as a zoning cocoon so they could take the siege camp um I do not anticipate Queen's Consorts will uh, play it safely for much longer. You know, they want blood. They want to get some of these structures down. They want to be able to have an advantage for the next objective. They don't want to have their camp stolen again. <laughs> uh, I'm anticipating they will roam as five and look to go for the kill or get these structures down as we do see them rotating here onto bottom four just at the same time that Dread Pirates does get top siege and maybe is looking to push this last keep down. I think Dread Pirates have seen if they could get some damage off on this, and they know that they have to back, so they're like, maybe we can just get some quick damage before they can back. We can try a little Owl to stall one retreat. It doesn't stall our retreat, but hey, that Hyperion should be able to get it pretty low. Maybe won't finish it off, but that applies. It it's does done. finish it off. So that definitely was a, a really solid call. Now it, it's one objective. One objective wins the game for Dread Pirates. Uh, but at the same time, this is when Queen's Consort is the strongest. This is where their team right. comp is going to do the most. Level 18 to, to 20 is going to be absolutely insane. So now, either team could play this as a stall game if they wanted to. Right. Uh, or they could just go for the race. And it looks like Dread Pirates is just going to go for uh, defense first. And then possibly wrap around and do a race. We'll see. Both teams wrapping around. They want to go for a fight here. With the Dread topping. Pirates just actually want to stall. Yeah, well, With the top is vulnerable for Queen's Consorts. And, you know, the longer they let top push, the... You know, ooh, a lot of damage ooh. on that Valkyrian. Charging in. Cocoon is going out on the Joanna once again. We have the ult coming out from Imperius. We have a lot of damage coming out from the Toronto ult. Uh, Hanzo Era only hits the Imperius. A lot of people getting in this. Going for a Twilight Dream. Stunned afterwards from the Joanna huge amounts of damage coming out malfurion dies in the back line resets coming out from uh sir stiggles on that one and it looks like the next reset is going to be coming out possibly but there's just so much pressure here and it was a one for two and we have the ggs getting called out uh from queen's consort they realize that if this immortal goes in the hands of dread pirates there's nothing they can do and there's really not much that they can do on taking a fight here as everyone's full health uh, just a little low on mana for a couple of the people here. Shouldn't really matter too much because during halftime, they're going to have the time to get uh, the rest of their health and mana. So this is going to be, this could possibly be game right here. It's really the last fight that Queen's Consort has available. They're going to be down two people. Uh, maybe only down one if you're counting the Imperius on the other side. But it is also their healer as well as a Hanzo. Now Hanzo will have an arrow coming out soon, but... Yeah, 20s online, though, for Dread Pirates. Hanzo is up. Both teams fully up. And Dread Pirates looks like they're actually going for a engage here instead of going for a race. They're going to take a fight. I don't know if this is the best path. I, I think, honestly, they just need to finish off this. They win with the Immortal as long as they don't die here. Um, 
And they're grouping up a little too much. I mean, against the Zeratul, this could be a VP. VP was still down for 10 seconds. We have the Cocoon just to finish off the Immortal. And we've got an ult coming out onto the Rainer. A lot of damage on the Rainer. Everything's going out onto this Rainer. Rainer's down. We have Sir Stiggle's looking rough. Bunch. Roughed up. That Li Ming goes down as well. Ooh, Bunker VP just and VP. to pull down the, the location and it gets a, a fight ready to go we have a ton of healing coming out of mystic right now this tyrann is keeping everyone up the uh oh, the lurker. Is used. and this fight i mean again the immortal went in the side that they needed to go i believe they need to push with this immortal um if they want to try to end the game but it's really risky it'll be a two versus four but this immortal if it's just free cleared again it's gonna again Level 20s now. Zeratul, he's at his peak. He can heal a ton. He can do a ton of damage. And if they clear these immortals for free every time, there's just not much that can be done. But it looks All like right. it's going to be a free cleared immortal. Possibly might. I don't even think it'll break the shield. I don't and think so. No. Dread Pirates really needs to start looking at these engages and trying to find maybe an area where they can sneak some kills. We've got top fort, which is vulnerable. That's likely going to be the next target that Queen's Consort's going to go for. Just quickly destroy top fort. I'd like to see Dread Pirates hide in the bush, possibly in the rotation of where they can go, and they might be able to get a kill. Otherwise, it really is just going to come down to Queen's Consort playing this out. We had GG's called already, but this game right. is definitely not over yet. It's not over yet. Uh, we do know that someone does have to deal with bot. Dread Pirates is there. You know, they're trying to keep that pressure going. They are out macroing Queen's Consorts, it seems, on this map, uh, looking for those picks and getting them. I, I would hope that Ember knows by this time that she cannot be alone down here. But Dread Pirates is coming in, uh, just hiding. They're going for the sneaky one. Going they're going to see King. if the enemies push forward a little bit. If Queen's oh, Consort are. pushes forward, we could go right in on the cocoon. We Ooh, can and there it is! Holy so much damage. There's the cocoon on the healer. A ton of damage. That is the Hanzo dead. That is the VP. It's it's just a desperate VP at this point. They they don't have a Hanzo to follow up. They don't have anything. They're just stalling it out. And we have the uh, damage going out. Try to go for one reset, but honestly, they don't need this at all. They'll be able to get the the blaze in the back line. And now they just walk right up. Let this uh, Hyperion do its damage, and that should be game number one of a best of five. Yeah. So we will be seeing a lot more of these two teams as we end off in game number one. Wow. So that was pretty good. I mean, Queen's Consort, they, they drafted well. They knew what they needed to do. But unfortunately, I mean, that early game was just too rough. I would have liked to see them have something that could have helped a little bit more in that early game. Uh, right. If they could have just drafted something that had a strong early game, possibly like a Varian instead of the Blaze, just to give themselves something like a high, like a they, Varian gets to that level four earlier, so he's a little bit scarier earlier. Uh, I don't really know. I would have liked to see them just have something that could be much scarier for those early objectives, but they ended up just getting just smashed. I mean, even instead of the Malfury and have like an Alex Straza or. Uh, I don't know if Anduin's available in this tournament right now. Not right um, now, But just no. something that uh, could keep them going in these the early game. But either way, uh, both teams played this exactly how they were supposed to play this, except for just those couple odd fights in there. Uh, it really came down to just a few things. I really didn't like the VP usage. Almost every time it, it had bad synergy with the Hanzo arrow, a good VP into a Hanzo arrow is game ending. And I think I would have liked to see more of that. Uh, but it, it really just depends on uh, it. Just it's so clutch. It and these are teams that that practice together so much. So these right. are the things that they really need to be playing with is these these combo oriented comps and making sure that they're landing it. I mean, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about that game? I questioned giving up the Anubarak for the Zeratul from the get go, and I think that was a huge thing. Um, Johanna being cocooned very frequently and Malfurion being the other target really put Queen's Consorts in a place where they couldn't give it their best, you know, without that front line or those heals. It was just like uh, time to party for Dread Pirates, time to get those kills. I want to go over the, the stats really quick from that last game. 
because I'm curious after all the technical difficulties, I wasn't able to really catch up on them. Um, you know, nine to 11 when it comes to kills. Tyrande was was valuable there, doing so much damage. I think that blow-up comp was exceptional from what I can see from these stats. I'm going to pull them up on screen for everyone else. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, Tyrande, her healing was really good. Her her damage was, was pretty solid. I think that, I mean, I really think Mystic played so well that game. Every single fight that there was a cluster... He had a star fall on him every right. single time. And there that's just so much healing. It's just heals after heals after heals. So I, I think he really played that well. I think honestly, this game kind of showed how damage numbers, uh, while they were they were close and the game was close, it it all just came down to like one or two fights. Like uh overall it, it was just a, a couple things here and there, and that's that was about it. So it's it's really fascinating to see how how little it takes in some of these team fights. It and we saw that team fights go both ways. I mean, we would see uh, dread pirates blowing up something, and then we immediately later we would see uh, uh, queen's consort come in there, and they would win a team fight really quick. And it's it just really like one or two things that both teams had different ways of dealing damage, and they both found ways to do it. Yeah, such a volatile place for both. Um... There were so many close fights, though, and those picks just weren't enough to get Queen's Consorts onto that side of the map to take it, take any structures, really, because Dread Pirates were just ahead of them a couple of steps and ready to gank at any time, and that's the luxury of what you can do with a Nubarak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that was the thing. I mean, they literally just... That that last fight was exactly what Dread Pirates needed to do. They they had this pressure. They applied the pressure, and they all they had to do was wait. They had to wait for just a single mistake. And we saw the Hanzo and the Malfurion step too far forward, stunned right into the the Hanzo, and then cocooned the the Malfurion. It was game over. So I do think that we need to see that a Nubarak banned uh, or picked up. It can't be slid through anymore. I know they want to do the target bans, get rid of that Sylvanas, but honestly. Uh, I feel that the, um, I really feel that the Anubarak needed to be dealt with. Yeah, Anubarak is, is a problem. Lost. I think for both sides, both sides have a strong Anubarak, and they knew that Johanna was strong, so that cocoon going out was, was just all we needed. Quickly to go over maps, it looks like Dread Pirates picked up Towers of Doom here for game two. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. This map is definitely all about rotation and strategy, not getting called out, really keeping your footing in that bottom lane and maintaining strong, not trying to maybe, I mean, if you have the luxury, surely taking down the rest of the bell towers if you can, but just I'm curious to see how they're going to do it. I don't think I've seen either teams play this map. I've I've actually seen some scrims with both teams on this map. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting one. Um, there are a lot of strategies that you can play out. The bottom lanes are always extremely important. And so, and we are into the draft for Towers of Doom. I'd like to see, honestly, I'd like to see Sylvanas being picked out, uh, but it'll likely get banned. I wouldn't mind seeing that Li Ming again. Uh, if they could get the Anubarak and Li Ming again, it would be crazy. Um, but uh, there's, because they do have the second pick again. So if they can sneak that out, Malthale banned right away. Interesting. I know uh, Bat Mary's pretty good at Mouth Ale, but I didn't right. think it was first ban worthy. I'm hoping that Ember gets a Leoric here. I feel like in those choke points on this map, Leoric can Diablo be ben. pretty crazy. Uh, Diablo... Leoric can be definitely very strong. Yeah. Uh, he's... He, and this is a pretty good map for him. You can double soak pretty easily. You can cover the zones. And worst case, you can always entomb someone so that you can grab the point. Or you can entomb someone to get kills. Uh, either way, it's a very good map for him. Sylvanas ban. We do see that target ban coming out. And there's a Jaina ban. Again, a target ban. They're more focused with making sure the enemies don't have their main heroes and focused right. on the best heroes for the map. So... What is going to be the first pick? Are they going to make the same mistake? Leave that Anubarak open? They get the Anubarak and Li Ming next game? Or are they going to take the Anubarak? Yeah, there's a Zeratul. They're going for it again. <laughs> go big Let's or go home? plays out just like last game. Like, hold on one there's more time. <laughs> Give me there's another chance. Deja All right. vu. I mean, are we seeing... Oh, Ooh, we're Bat seeing Mary the gets stolen. the Leoric. 
priorities. So is this going to be a Li Ming just to counter the cocoon? Or are they going to leave the Li Ming up this time? Well, Yonners has to pick something. And Jane is banned. So uh, I feel like I've never seen Yonners not be able to pick Jaina when he wants to. So I literally don't have any idea what we could see. Uh, but we're seeing an Abathur come out with that Muradin. Abathur, Muradin. Abathur is pretty good with Zeratul. My only concern with both of these is they're both very late game heroes. Abathur in the new build doesn't really turn on until 13. And unfortunately, Zeratul doesn't turn on until 16. So they could be having the same problem they had last time. Of They might lose way too much of this in the early game. Yeah. And so what Dread Pirates needs to do in this situation is Dread Pirates just needs to pick early game Siege and just push as much as possible. Uh, if they can pick up that Li Ming, they're going to be in a really good spot. And they can just Siege this entire time. I'd like to see, personally, a Li Ming and a Malfurion just have Malfurion innervate all day long so the, Mal the Li Ming can just keep pushing. That would be a fantasy land for them, but I, I really can't get into their minds right now. I feel like because they do play together so frequently in the scrims and they... I know Hollis spends all of his time studying all of his opponents. I, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see. There's no... I wasn't expecting Leoric on the side of Dread Pirates, you know? Um, yeah, definitely. I, there's just... There's no logic here. I think they put, picked the Leoric simply so that Ember couldn't have it. Um, I mean, Ember plays a really good Leoric, so I right. think that was just their idea was... Simply doing that. There's the Ana. There's the Gul'dan. There's the Siege damage. So they're going to have the Gul'dan Siege a lot in the early game. They're going to keep him healed up the entire time. And it's going to be a really, really rough early game. So we need to see some heroes with self-sustain here. I know that there is need... the Abathur. I oh. think ultimately we need a healer and we need something with wave clear. There is a healer with wave clear and then a Phoenix. Okay. Phoenix can double so I think that's how they handle this. They need to wave clear so that uh, the enemy team can't push forward. Uh, Consorts really needs to, to just clear up the waves and try to make it to at least level 13, hopefully level 16. Now, it's a good map for a late game comp purely because you can make it like the objectives don't give you experience. So you can give up a few objectives and wait for better fights. That's true. And last pick here, I would like to see another siege, something like a Rainer. Yeah, definitely. A lot of siege damage once he gets in Hyperion. They're taking that bottom keep every time. Right. So we are getting into this next game. Initial thoughts on these drafts. What do you think? I, I feel like Dread Pirates has a really solid comp here. Uh, Queen's Consorts has a very specific uh, burden of execution with this comp. And... Luckily, they have elusive heroes like Phoenix when that dive does happen. Um, but I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of Rhaegar. I know he is a nice battle healer and all of that. But depending on the damage output with those Echoed Corruption uh, stacks as they get higher and higher, it can just be a bit overwhelming for a healer like Rhaegar, in my opinion. Yeah, I it's it's a challenge one. Rhaegar is, I mean, him with Abathur. Abathur can cover a little bit of the extra healing, so it does end up working out, but it it's not a big deal either way. Anyways, I will start off introducing a blue side, and on blue side we have Queen's Consort with Hollis playing uh, Muradin. We have Doctor Holiday onto the Rhaegar. We have Mayog on Zeratul, Ember on Abathur, and. I feel like I forgot one. Yonners is on Phoenix. And on to the red team. All right. On the red team, we have Bat Mary on the Leoric, Delurker on Anubarak, Rainer played by Slithering One, Sir Stiggles on the Gul'dan, and Mystic on Anna. This is Dread Pirates. All righty. And so at the start of this game, ultimately what needs to be happening is Abathur needs to be soaking uh, one or two lanes. And really whatever lane Abathur is going to be trying to defend should be pushed pretty hard. And at the same time, there should be a four man just dominating. And so every time that we see a little bit of a uh, 
a wipe of the wave for Dread Pirates mid lane. They need to go down bot and they need to take not only the wave, but also deal some damage to the structures. And as long as they do this correctly, they're going to end up taking this game pretty handily just because there's not a lot that can be done. Uh, and this is going to be especially easier when Leora can get to four and they get that extra uh, wave clear from Neil Peasants. A little bit of yeah. engage going on, but they unfortunately Queen's Consort just doesn't have the damage yet. And they, they don't have the bodies get... either to distribute the damage. I mean, the the what can come out from Dread Pirates here with just three is is quite significant. Um, they do have yeah. to play it safely, and the sappers are online, and we know that both teams are going to prioritize these and try to invade them with that Anubarak. It's going to be dangerous for Queen's Consorts to go for theirs, but it looks like. It looks like Zeratul was able to take Leoric down. Top lane. First kill of the game. Definitely. Zeratul with an Abther hat is absolutely incredible. Now, the, here, the big challenge about what Dread Pirates is doing is they're not focusing on soaking at all. And so they're going to end up being lower in experience, even though they are getting the forts that matter. So unfortunately, after they take this fort or this this turret, they're going to need to start working on their experience a little bit, possibly going for uh, camps while someone is soaking. I mean, level four, again, it'll be a lot easier for Leoric, but it still is going to be needing to be picked up, at least some of the soak picked up by the rest of the members of Dread Pirates. We see camps being picked up by both teams. Should be relatively quick for both. A Phoenix and a Rhaegar can melt through camps very quickly. And then we have yeah. a, a Raynor as well as a Gul'dan can melt through camps. As long as this doesn't reset here, uh, which unfortunately it does mm, reset. It, so, right yeah, it looks like they were standing a bit back. That gives the opportunity to Queen's Consorts for an invade if they wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it, though. Uh, and, yeah, it looks like they're going to rotate out safely. But the first... Alters are active in about 20 seconds. I think both and sides of Sappers are just going to get taken down. Well, it just depends on how much wave clear Queen's Consorts actually has, because this is very easy for Dread Pirates to clear up. But unfortunately, it might be a lot harder for uh, Queen's Consort to clear. They don't have a lot of safe wave clear yeah, that can hit actually. that far away. Uh, right. Best they can do is send the Murden in with a Rhaegar and then have the Phoenix hit it. But it looks like all the Sappers are going to go all through. While Rainer's also going to get the bottom objective, Leoric's going to stall out top objective and kind of just fight a little bit with Zeratul. Honestly, I would say for Dread Pirates, they don't even need to take this fight up top. They should just take the bottom keep and just keep it for the rest of the game. Uh, but it looks like they are going to take the shots. It's not too difficult for them to get it. And they will get that advantage early on. So not only do they have a huge amount of damage on the bottom fort, uh, but they also have the capabilities of... Uh, and they also start off with an extra four damage. So this is starting off exactly how Dread Pirates wants it to go. They need to get such a large advantage that by the time it gets to the Abathir and the Zeratul power spikes, they don't even need to worry because the enemies have gotten desperate by that time. So that's really what they need to focus <laughs> on. They've gotten desperate by that time. Wow. You, have you ever had those fights yeah, where absolutely. you feel like you oh, feel yeah. like no matter what you do, like you're on a timer, but the enemy team isn't right. on a timer, so you take these really desperate fights that the enemies are just at huge advantages. Yeah, that's really yeah. what uh, Dread Pirates are trying to get here. Is they just want to get that advantage so much that the enemies feel like they just have to get desperate and take like really bad fights. Well, I mean, level sevens are already online for Queen's Consorts. I don't feel like uh, maybe they look to be too desperate at this point yet yeah okay they may lose bottom fort but as they do scale and as this mule does heal it <laughs> you know they could easily get it back and turn this around it is very early in the game uh ultimate comeback map right here hopefully it definitely <laughs> is. And yeah so we'll see this out and i I honestly think it'd be interesting to see how they play out this this next objective. Uh, I mean, again, Dread Pirates, they need to take that bottom fort as fast as possible. And unfortunately, the longer they let it go, all that damage is going to be healed up. So this is an interesting fight. I mean, we're getting uh, close to 10s for both teams, but neither one is going to get it for this particular objective. I don't think either team should really be too aggressive here. I, I think if they can interrupt, uh, if Dread Pirates can interrupt, it'd be good for them. But otherwise... They, it looks like both teams just take the trade. What I see is Queen's Consort's prioritizing experience at all times. Playing safely, letting Dread Pirates take what they want right now, but really looking for that significant 
power spike. Maybe at 10, maybe it's at 13, maybe it's at 16. And then maybe snowballing from there because they are playing very safe. And from a team that loves to brawl, we haven't really seen them be the ones to engage those types of fights. Uh, to be fair, they have three bodies at all times against four, but I don't know. A little bit of an engage going in a little too early. The Lurker's taking way too much damage on Anubarak and pretty much just gets blown up immediately. And now yeah. there's no real peel to get anyone out. So Phoenix melts down just about everyone, takes Tense. out yeah. whatever they need to take out. I think they got a little too aggressive on just clearing these camps and they honestly didn't need to do that at all. They could have just let the Gul'dan clear for free. And this is starting to look really, really good for Queen's Consort. They're getting closer to the power spikes they need. Yeah. And these fights are only going to get more difficult for uh, Dread Pirates. And especially now that 10s are out. So Dread Pirates is going to be fighting a, an uphill battle for pretty much the rest of this game now. Yeah, what's crazy is the fact that that was the level 10 power spike that happened when you know Anubarak was taken down. They calculated that. And it's just so evident, you know. It's Definitely. Like, I mean, we're currently 28 shots uh, or 28 health for Dread Pirate, or sorry, for Queen's Consort and 32 for Dread Pirate. So it's still a pretty long game that we're going to be going into, but it's going to be interesting. Uh, we've got a little bit of a fight going on. We have Leora coming down. They don't really want to take the fight until Leora comes down. Cocoon comes out. VP comes out to stop the Cocoon from being scary. And this is a lot of people getting close to this. Uh, a Horrify only hits one person. That when Sessual comes that out to, you know, Slithering One having to tap, Mayog was almost dead. Ember is a double Zeratul, which is double terrifying. But Dr. Holiday was able to get that altar bottom. And uh, chat, I did read what you said. Yes, I did take the overlay off so you could see the core health. It is an even 28 to 28 at this time. And we are seven, almost eight minutes into the game on game two, best of five, Queen's Consorts versus Dread Pirates. And it looks like they're going back to their plan one. Unfortunately, this time they're getting a little bit past the power spikes. They don't have any major advantages anymore. Uh, they're going for some things, quick cleanses coming out from Dr. Holiday, uh, and they can't really push too far in here. And a lot of damage going out onto Rainer, slows onto Rainer. Uh, looks like a little bit of follow up onto this uh, Murden, but it's just really it's going to be very very hard to push against this now yeah and 13s are are approaching i mean level 11 is all that dread pirates has at this time they do have cocoon oh my gosh sir stiggles making it nano out. boost okay so we've got the the cocoon going out and nano boost going out this should be dr holiday falling uh damage over time unfortunately isn't going to be enough to kill him and the murden comes out they go for the murden have a horrify gets the murden oh that dwarf uh, toss Oh, the hat wasn't Ooh. enough. Sorry, I got really excited there, Paradox. Yonner is <laughs> using his escape. Oh, my goodness. And it... Unfortunately... Okay, Echoed Corruption is done. So an Echoed Corruption could finish off this keep. This next objective is going to be favored to Dread Pirates, even though they're down a talent tier here. Purely because they own this bottom structure, it's going to be really hard for the enemies to get through because there's these tiny little chokes that the enemies can fit through now because they won't be able to come through bottom lane. So this objective is going to be a lot easier for Dread Pirates to hold even down this level. But it is a great power spike for Anubra, or sorry, for Abathur, right. as Abathur can finally heal the Zeratul or these frontliners for each uh, enemy hero that's there. Both teams playing this out pretty safe, though. They're starting off with their camps to apply a little bit of pressure, and now they're going to be stepping up to taking these objectives. It looks like they don't really care about this level 13 lead too much. They're playing a little safe, but not too worried. Leoric's coming down, and we do have the cocoon going out immediately. Where's the nano boost? Yeah. And Toon oh, is ready, right. and there it drops. Uh, Yonner is able to get out, and Mayog getting behind. Ember's getting really low. Oh, Ooh. Ember was on the uh, the clone. Mayog's getting pretty low. We've so got Stiggles. Stiggles getting low. Everyone is getting low, and uh, but we also do have a camp that's pushing in bottom lane, so we may still get some free shots of damage. Doc Holiday sneaks out those three shots, but at the same time, what are we seeing? Uh, looks like the Leoric's going to be taken out. Uh, nice Horrify coming out, may be able to take out this uh, the Zeratul. Unfortunately, he does get a great Void Prison right there, and we do get some extra shots off from the uh, 
from both teams. Both teams did three damage right there. Uh, despite the fact that there was only one objective available, both teams got three damage off. We have a, a charge in, a really low health in Nubarak charging in. I'm actually pretty surprised at this. I mean, I I saw the value for a second, you know, charging in, and then that echoed corruption following that with everyone stunned in that line. Um, chat saying that from the way they've seen Mayog run Zera with Abba, he solos too much. He's curious to see how this goes. He is soloing a lot, but I think that was purely to get his power spike. He's now with the team, and uh, we're looking to see some, as Paradox would say, impactful engagements. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's the that's the hope for sure. It's definitely getting closer and closer to Queen's Consort's game. Uh, they they're able to take back the point, which Siege is probably their worst trait in this particular team comp they if they lose even two forts they pretty much lost this entire game but the team fights are going to get easier and easier for queen's consort one more level and now they've got zeratul's major power spikes they'll have abathers they'll have zeratul's and it should be a pretty pretty solid game now we do see the meal going out top this mm -hmm. time that means it should be pretty easy if uh if dread pirates ever wants to just sneak bottom uh, it looks like they're going to take the the point there and we've got an invade yeah. coming out top so it looks like the play here an invade oh bat mary getting out uh but not quite going to make it out the tomb Ooh. comes out more as a zoning tool for her own team to be able to get in cocoon out on Rhaegar. the lurker does go in and hollis is looking very low having to dwarf toss out cocoon is pinging for help not even a hero just the cocoon itself with a hand above <laughs> help uh yeah, we're just going to see a trade here, but... Well, uh, this actually was in favor. There was right. an objective there down was. bottom. So in favor of Dread Pirates, they have that extra damage. So they do have that four extra shots on them. Now they're going to go back to sieging. Unfortunately, they're close to level 16. They're going to have to play this safe. And we're going to have to make sure that this Leoric is double soaking enough to where he can keep up. But he did miss the wave mid. Uh, mid lane always gets there first, so you usually want to soak that. Uh, He's worried about fighting the Zeratul up top lane because it's going to be a Zeratul with a hat very soon. So he's not going to be able right. to take that out. And they do have that level 16. Zeratul is top uh, and is hatted. But the rest of Zeratul's team is down here. Bot with sappers and, and toe. top lane should be going in favor of, uh, of Queen's Consort very soon. I mean, this... We got Zeratul and the hat coming in. We'll have all of these charge in. It should just be a little bit more damage after that, and they'll be able yeah. to take up top. But at the same time, we've got bottom lane. Dread Pirates is just trying to push it as far. We've got a cocoon coming out, and uh, no nano this time. Uh, it's normally been a cocoon into a nano each time. Uh, Nano's coming a little late after the cocoon, actually. I don't know if this is the right time to get this out. Uh, a lot Stiggles. of damage going out on the Stiggles. Ooh, looking very low. Immediately. Yeah. Level 16 Zeratul is just a little too scary. Ooh, slithering one, not looking in great shape either. Getting a stun. Hollis, relentless, having popped the ultimate of his. Chases after him with VP down, but Mayog looking very low, needing a hat from Abathur. And now Hyperion is zoning Queen's Consorts out from being able to further engage as we do see the tributes, or rather the altar spawning here. Definitely. We've got level 16s for both teams now, but uh, again, Dread Pirates has, uh, they do hit some decent power spikes, but it's going to be it's going to be definitely tricky. They want to try to take a, a trade here. They did get bottom lane first, so a and... lot of damage right off the bat. Oh, there comes Phoenix. Cause Ooh, Phoenix's that ultimate, was the interrupt but... on the, yeah, interrupt on Phoenix's teleport away, and that is uh, that is the objective in favor for them. They need to take this. There's a mule right there. They're going to try to push pretty far forward to see if they can take this before the mule heals it. We have a lot of damage coming out from Zeratul, but it's not going to be enough. Mule ends up dying. We've got the slow on the Zeratul. Next objective is both of the neutral points, middle and bottom. So if Dread Pirates can hold this, they can potentially do 10 damage here uh, because they could easily take bottom lane without interruption, take the fight top lane. But it looks like they're simply just going to give up bottom lane to save top lane, which is, hmm. I don't know if this is the call. Uh, they may end yeah. up be going, they're heading back down bottom. Maybe they're... Is this fast enough? I don't know if this is going to be fast enough. They might be able to do it. They do have Cocoon, they do have Nano Boost, they do have Horrify, they could charge in immediately, but it looks like they're just going to take the enemy's camp and hmm. play it out safe. All right. 
definitely a safe play. Um, maybe a lot of like, uh, what do we do? Wait, let's go back bot. Ah, oh, too late. Okay, let's get this. <laughs> uh, you know, it's hard to decipher what's what they're thinking. It does open them up to an invade. Uh, as Mayok oh, does do jump on there. We can't steal the objective with VP out there. We have a rewind coming out from the Anubarak trying to stop everyone. Ooh, Delurker is nice getting popped. A lot of damage going out. We do have the clone already out. The clone's going to be taken out very quickly. We have a, a uh, Entomb with a nano boosted oh, cool wow. dam melting this point. people. But unfortunately, this is going heavily in favor of Queen's Consort right now. Yeah. Currently, wow. it's 3 0. Four. The only one that they ended up taking out was the the clone, and the clone does not give experience anymore. So that is, uh, this is four kills. Four kills. Now they don't want to actually capture this objective yet. They want to wait until they can grab bottom first. So they can get the, that ten damage. Now the only thing Ana could really do in this situation is possibly go for an interrupt. They don't actually go for the siege. They're just gonna take the safe play here. Yeah. I figured they would have pushed or pushed in. Uh, bot lane taking that as a team and then went and channeled both for those extra two damage but either way they take the safe plan they're going to bring down the enemy team down to nine and uh looks like they're going to go for it now but unfortunately the enemies are now almost up we have uh dread pirates yeah. almost all available in, the, in case they want to defend against this and nice and tomb triggers at least a teleport um triggers a teleport but Mayog is top getting these sappers and you know the top top fort actually already went down so with all of dread pirates bottom this could be an easy three more hits on the core uh, if no one goes up there to defend it, it definitely looks like it's going to be and that's going to put it, them in a, a really rough position we have the zeratul coming in the back possibly a vp uh no no VP this time. Uh, oh, there Ooh. we go. So he jumped in, got the auto attack, used his Vorpal Blades to get back in there, and then he used the VP to lock everyone down. Extremely low for everyone on Dread Pirates. Looks like Slithering One may end Slithering up dying Slithering One's here. not going to make it, no. This bottom fort is really low, too. And and those and pumpkins did make it right in. Uh, oh, my That's goodness. Sir Stickles and Ana just getting wrecked. Yeah. By Zeratul, Bat With Mary. This fort, all they need to do is oh they need to take this goodness. fort. They need to go right up mid lane. They can go up to mid lane right now. Uh, actually, one objective wins them the game. They just need to defend top and leave one person bot, and they win the game. Yeah. Uh, if and Dread Pirates, they need to try to siege down top as fast as possible. There's no way they can fight this objective. They need to take this. They need to destroy uh, top as fast as they can. Kill off this mule. The mule's going to heal 40% of its health. If they can't take out this mule quickly, they're going to be in trouble. It uh, looks like quickly taking it out from the Anubarak onto the keep. Is it going to be fast enough? It doesn't look like it's going to. We have Zeratul who's channeling the last one and it will be taken before it goes. And that is that game is number GG. two in favor of Queen's Consort. That is how you come back or you calculate your actual game. It seemed like they had no hope, but we knew we knew very well they were waiting for those power spikes, you know. But they really uh, were. Wow, they really were, and and they played it safe. They knew that this map they they could actually do this. They could draft a later comp. They could give up a couple early objectives, play it a little safe, and they played it to their advantages. And they made sure they hit those power spikes they needed to hit. And then at that point, they were just done. They, it was very simple for them to just go through and just take whatever they wanted to for the rest of that game. Uh, and they, I think, um, I honestly think Dread Pirates just got a little shaken up after that one fight they lost. And they just felt like they couldn't do their their actual strategy anymore. I think right. they needed to play a little bit more cautiously in the beginning, but also still exactly what they needed to do. They needed to blow up a mid lane, go down bot, blow up bot lane, blow up one turret, go up to mid lane, blow up that, blow up bot. Because what ended up happening is they just were so far behind in experience despite the fact that they were taking the forts they needed to take. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, I think both teams played really well, but Queen's Consort definitely pulled this one out and they played it extremely well. They did. I was I was really questioning for a moment. By the way, your camera's not loading for some reason. Maybe is it not? Maybe disable, re-enable it. Um, Definitely. We'll uh, do that. There you are. Cool. I was I was questioning the Zeratul pick. To be honest, I mean they tried it the first game. They didn't win with that. Uh, then the Abathur hat on the Zeratul. Sure, you know. 
that's always the dream, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, let's just ab a hat the Zeratul and win. GG, it's easy. <laughs> but it was more than that. It was not fighting when they didn't have to. It was not getting engaged on when they didn't need to be. Uh, and, you know, honestly, Dread Pirates taking that rotation top and then coming back bot was part of the downfall of that entire game for mm-hmm. them. It was yeah, all there was calculated. Few times, there was a few too many times where Leoric ended up dying on his own, and it's a challenge. When you have to double soak against a Zeratul with an Abahat, it's really difficult. So um, I, I think if Slithering 1 ended up getting his Sylvanas, this would have been an extremely different game. But at the same time, I mean, great bands coming out from Queen's Consort. They've done their resor- research on the enemy team, and they're like, we, we know who we can't let them have this entire game. So they, I don't think we're going to be seeing that Sylvanas all game. <laughs> Chat saying, imagine getting Zara and Abba through draft. <laughs> right. And, and that's the thing that's interesting is, I mean, both of these teams are target banning so much that a lot of these meta picks are getting by. And I usually tell people, I say, uh, this whole season we're going to be seeing Anubarak, Maev, Zeratul, Avathar, Ana. All of those are going to be banned almost every single game, or they're going to be first pick. And both of these teams are focusing so heavily on target banning heroes that the enemies are good at that they're all of these meta picks are sneaking by every game. We're seeing meta pick after meta pick. Right. The challenge is that these meta picks on people like Mayod uh, are are actually doing a lot. Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, you know, ban the Jaina, but give us you know the most feared combo in most maps, please. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, and honestly, uh, you know, Yonners did a great job on that uh, Phoenix. He had quite a bit of damage. Perfect hero for those in tombs, just able to get out and not even be phased by it. Definitely. I think, I, I really think they, all of Queen's Consort played it well. Their draft looked a little shaky in the beginning. Like they started off with a great idea, the Abathir, the Zeratul, and then the rest of their draft is pretty much like, what are we missing? You know, like we need wave clear. We need camp clear. Let's just slide in a Rhaegar and a Phoenix and call it a day. But they really did play it out well. So I think overall they're, uh, I think they, they played that to their, their advantages and made sure that, uh, that they, they did it well. Anyways, we are setting up for the next game. I believe they're just making yep. the decisions on their maps at the moment. They sure are. We are up in here all up in it as they say i'm getting you in here um it it will be infernal shrines and this map is so fun you know with the best of five and all these bands and things coming out it's like uh what do you have left you know right yeah infernal shrines is always a good one it's a map that's interesting because you can't stall out the objectives too long the objectives do give you value so you if you are going to be going for that Zeratul Abathur again, you may lose too much experience on the first couple objectives. And so they both teams are, can draft a little bit late game and a little bit early game. All of the uh, Punishers now scale really well into the late game with... Uh, I mean, even though Arcane Punisher scaling got nerfed, it's still really scary in the late game. So what's going to happen here is both teams could really thrive with a late game hero but they also need to make sure that they have everything that they need right. um but either way it's it's a really fun map i like this map because there's so many drafting opportunities for it you can draft early game you can draft late game you can draft uh things with aoe to win the objective you can do single target to just get kills uh so that the enemies don't win the objective uh there's so many things now i will say that uh Sir Stiggles has been playing really mean Li Ming, and this is one of Li Ming's worst maps. He may pick up that Gul'dan again instead. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how they choose to handle it. Definitely don't want to see a Li Ming on this map. Uh, I think I did see that recently, and I was perplexed. But just quickly, chat did ask to go over the picks and whatnot, and I'm not sure if you're referencing the maps or what, but here they are, uh, you know, we see that Infernal Shrines has been picked up. Uh, ban on Cursed Hollow, as well as Dragonshire um, with... Wait, hold on. So Battlefield of Eternity was picked by Dread Pirates, and they won that. 
and Towers of Doom was picked by Dread Pirates and Queen's Consorts won that. Color math is something that's apparently a challenge. Certainly is. These these maps, man, they are... Uh... <laughs> Color math with that map tool, all that clicking and weird places. Uh, I did it, though, Paradox, after the speculation that it would be a challenge. I was able to make it work. But it looks like <laughs> it everyone's ready, yes? I think, I think we're good. We're going to be heading into game number three. It is currently one-to-one. And we are going into the Infernal Shrines. Now, on mm. this map, I... I would like to actually see people doing some meta bans this time. Uh, I, I don't really want to see these target bans anymore. Uh, I, I feel like these meta picks are dominating for both teams. I mean, that Anubrak right. in that first game was crucial, and the Zeratul in the next game was crucial. So I feel like we need to see the Zeratul ban. I Instead of this Diablo, instead of the Jaina that keeps getting banned, I think this uh, the Zeratul definitely needs to get out. Chat saying that all yawners can play as Jaina, so it makes sense. Uh, toxic chat, but all it's all in good fun. Uh, they are friends. Lucio getting banned here. Pretty, uh, pretty good ban considering all of the areas that he can wall ride. I guess. I guess uh, Jaina getting banned once more. Well, Mystic plays a lot of Lucio, so that is it's it's one of his best heroes, and he's been playing a lot since Lucio got the rework. So, again, back to the target bans. Uh, interesting. We see the we see yeah. Queen's Consort banning the Blaze. Uh, Ember's a really strong Blaze, but I guess I mean then again. Bat Mary is, is a really great blaze too. So what is the first pick? This time, first pick from uh, Dread Pirates. They do sneak out to Sylvanas. They don't want that getting banned in the second round. Now, the way that yes. he plays Sylvanas is easily counterable by Medivh, but I don't know if Queen's Consort plays a lot of Medivh. So it could be an interesting pick to see, but otherwise uh, it, it's open for... It's open for an interesting fight. We do have the Anubarak and the Maev sneaking out. So instead of All the right. Zerat tool this time, they have the Maev. Nice to see that. Yeah, nice to see an Anubarak picked up by Queen's Consorts, Johanna this time going over to Dread Pirates. Now, when you talk about the mm -hmm. Sylvanas play, uh, is this the dive Sylvanas? He, he dives a little bit. It's mainly just a very bursty thing. So if you see his W go out on one target, if you're playing Medivh, you can pretty much just press W on whatever target the W goes on and uh, put that put that shield on once Sylvanas goes for it. Sylvanas just kind of blows up the, the entire combo that Sylvanas wanted to do. is just gone for a 14-second cooldown from a Medivh. Nice. But uh, we have a John and Stukov. Stukov's pretty good on this map, can lock down his own. I actually really like Stukov against Maev. As long as he's not the one that gets caught, he can silence the entire zone, and then Maev can't really do anything major in there. So yeah. I always like that. I think that's a, it's a pretty, it's not a hard counter, but it's a pretty nice way to answer that. We do see Imperius and Leoric bands. They are not liking each other's solo laners right now. <laughs> uh, well, we see an Arthas, a Rexar. What are we going to see? <laughs> Kelthos getting picked up by Yanners. By Yanners! I have to say it like that. Sorry. It just, <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Deckard Kane, the old man. Deckard Kane, yep. So we've got a pretty good engage. I mean, Maev pulls everyone in, Deckard locks him down, and Nubrak can either follow up or he can hang out and just cocoon people. Uh, Kael'thas, a lot of damage if they can pull people in for a while. And uh, now we get to see how they answer this. They need a little bit more damage, and they need a good solo laner. And they need to pick a solo laner that doesn't get countered too hard. Uh, I mean, Blaze, Leoric, things like that are, are, are taken. So we'll see. They end up going with the Yorel as their solo laner and a Nazebo. Hmm. So that's interesting. The on this map's a little <laughs> challenging because your damage gets blocked by a lot of the summons during the objectives. But it is a map that could be could go to level 20. So Nazebo could have a lot of value there. Right. And could be a third tank if the game goes long you enough. You might see a Malthael, <laughs> actually. A Malthael would answer. Oh, a Sonya. Oh. Sonya's really good on this objective. Does okay against Urel. And uh, could be a... Pretty interesting one. So 
I would hmm. say that honestly, I mean my my concern about this is is primarily that uh really Queen's Consorts is is all in on these combos. It's a they have a couple different combos they can play out and they're all pretty um hard to land while on the other side we have uh the dread pirates and they are pretty much just playing kind of the opposite all, all right. of their their things just work on their own the sylvanas can 100 to 0 someone on her own she doesn't need anyone's help nazebo is going to be just doing a bunch of damage spread out joanna can just kind of keep everyone peeled out and we've got the urel at the same way it can just be annoying so it's really going to come down to how uh, Queen's Consort plays this out. Anyways, I will start off by introducing the left team. We have uh, Hollis on Anubrak. We've got Mayog on Maev. We've got Ember on Sonya. Then we have Deckard Kane being played by Dr. Holiday. And Yonners is playing uh, Kaelthos onto the red team. All right, and on the red team for Dread Pirates, we have Delurker on Johanna Mystic playing the Stukov. Nazebo played by Slithering One, Sir Stiggles on the Sylvanas, and Bat Mary looking fabulous on the Urel. Almost a forgotten hero these days. Definitely. She gets, I mean, after Imperius came out, it was pretty much like. Did you want the more damage from Imperius, or did you want like more annoyingness from Urel? And then at the same time, they also did nerf Urel's mana cost. So uh, it, it did kind of just push her out a little bit. She's still annoying. We do have the Maev getting a chain onto one person. Silence was able to keep them Ooh. pretty safe. But honestly, it looks like Sir Stiggles is still going to be taken out. Sir Stiggles is, wait a second. Lives! With 50 Sir Stiggles health. lived, but Sir Stiggles is the one that's playing the Sylvanas, despite the fact that Slithering One is the one that they've been banning Sylvanas for. That is interesting, huh. actually. Uh, we see huh. a chain onto the Joanna, but Joanna simply just presses her trait and walks away. Doesn't worry about it at all. Um, and so onto the early game of Infernal Shrines. It's all about pretty much just getting a little bit of value here and there. Nothing too major. You look at where the first objective spawns and see if you can get any extra value from possibly getting some camps that are close to the objective for extra experience and camps that are far from the objective to get that extra value. So right now, both teams should be picking up their close camps and then they'll both want to grab their uh, bruiser camps probably closer to around 230. And that way they can both apply pressure while the objective's going. Both teams can do pretty well on this objective, and it's just going to be a matter of how they handle the fights and really just coordination from their teams. We see the experience starting off is heavily in favor of Queen's Consort. They have uh, essentially about 10 to 20% more experience, probably just because of the camp that they picked up. I wouldn't say it's too much over that, but uh, it is It definitely level fours are going to come out for Queen's Consort first. And we have more minions that are being missed down in bot lane. So this experience lead that Queen's Consort has is just going to be continued on from these camps. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of lag on stream. There could be. I will uh, I'll see if we can work on that a little bit. Cool. Um, uh, but uh, Queen's again, Consort's... Camp <laughs> yeah, Three they're camps. stealing it. Three camps in favor of the uh, of Queen's Consort. They are playing this out very, very well in the early game. Now, against an Azebo, that's kind of what you want to do. Really, when you're playing right. against an Azebo comp, you want to gain as many advantages as you can early game. Azebo, his whole deal right now is how many stacks can I get? And if there's any chance we get to 20 before we lose all of our keeps, we win the game. But if they lose any of their keeps before level 20, then this Nazebo comp is going to feel really bad. Yeah, it is a risky pick. It is one of those random picks, you know, um, but if played well, we'll definitely see. I did put the talents up for a chat to take a look at the quest progress for each people or each person that did select a stacking talent. Um, Queen's Consorts has a pretty good footing here on this objective. 
Definitely. It's going to be really hard because, oh, wow, a huge engage on a Sir Stiggles. Sir Stiggles is going to take a lot of damage and likely get ripped, and he's taken out very quickly. That is the Sylvanas already dead. The hardest challenge, I would say, for Dread Pirates on these objectives is that their damage is so slow that right. they're going to throw out all these damage over time abilities. And all Queen's Consort needs to do here is just wait for the damage over time to get them low and then just finish off all of the, the minions. But we do have Urel, who's just double soaking, knows, hey, you know what? All we have to do this game is get to level 20 without losing too much. So if I double soak this game, then we are good. But on to the bottom lane, we see uh, Joanna flipped over the objective and then used her trait to keep herself alive. But this could be a fort immediately. This is a lot of pressure being applied and not a lot of answers for it either. So first objective of the game usually only gets front walls and it is getting a fort. And yeah. possibly even some damage on the keep walls, too. So this is a great objective for Queen's Consort. Yeah, I am not surprised one bit uh, with it going the way that it has. I mean, both teams do have seven. You know, Queen's Consort is a little bit ahead. But like I mentioned the first game, when they picked that Zeratul over the Anubarak, Hollis on Anubarak is terrifying to me. With the Umbral uh, Binds from... The Maiev, alongside the route that's followed up with Dr. Holliday's uh, E on Deckard Kane, we're just seeing some terrifying initiations. And I would be absolutely afraid if I, <laughs> if I were Dread Pirates right now, because I don't think they've missed a single one of those wombos, these mini wombos they've been going for. Yeah, and it's it's going to be really difficult. Now, I will say that the Nazebo is currently stacking on a good pace. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of what can they do to get to level 20 it looks like their goal right now is hey maybe we can just take a fort really quick but we see that queen's consort's like we're not going to give you a fort we're going to take right. your your yeah. camp and then even though we're going to take your camp we're also going to stop you from getting a fort so they're just keeping everything in this game they're going to actually looks like they're going to go for an invade really quick yeah uh, we need to dismount out of this uh, and they're oh. a little too split. A huge engage onto the Stukov. Stukov's going to get CC'd into another CC, into a oh root, into stick. damage, and Stukov is dead. A grab onto the Stir Stiggles, but there's no way they're going to be able to get him. And at least yeah. out of that, the Nazebo is still stacking, and the camp does go in favor of Dread Pirates. So they at least are getting that little bit of experience, as well as we have the extra stacks coming out from Nazebo. So. <coughs> The lurker was able to just dip in and get that siege camp for sure. Um, looks like maybe they're rotating up to their bruiser now as we do get closer to the next objective. Tins are online for the side of Queen's Concerts. We have, uh, what's it called? Wrath of the Berserker for Sonia. Uh, Stay a while and listen by Deckard Kane. Warden's Cage from Maiev. Phoenix from the KT and Kakuna on the Anubarak. Are you okay, Paradox? I am I'm good to go. You know, just I took a drink and went in the wrong tube, you know, the usual. Yeah. But uh, well, we're all good to go. <laughs> um <laughs> No, we're we're all good. But the yeah, we have the camp being held and it's this is a really solid call coming out from Queen's Consort. They know that they're not gonna get invaded on for this camp. And they're the ones that have the camp advantage. Now, the challenge is this camp isn't that valuable for this objective. Uh, and I don't think either team should be really looking too much for a fight right now. They should be fighting while the enemies are distracted. But instead, Dread Pirates kind of went out a little too far, a little too forward. And they're taking a really rough fight. A big Holy silence Holy moly, out. that Warden's Cage. And the follow-up from Deckard. Huge Warden's Cage. Whoa. Huge amount of damage. And it's just it, everyone else is just getting taken out really quickly. Spear almost takes out the URL. Yeah. Uh, I really didn't think Dread Pirates should be trying to take a fight like that. They still need to just try to hold their own, last out as long as possible, and get to the point where they can get the um, this Nazebo stacked in level 20. They can't keep taking these fights where they their whole team gets wiped. They need to try to just hang out and yeah. maybe even go for that bottom fort so they get that passive experience and just give up the objective as of right now it looks like they keep going back in for the possibility of a fight they really I, shouldn't be going for this yeah not even just poking your head forward is gonna work here because i mean queen's consorts is looking for that interrupt they are looking for that that jump you know they want to jump the other team 
and uh, ooh, and there it goes, Hollis again, getting Sir Stiggles in a rough place, but Stukov able to knock them back a bit. Unfortunately, Stay a While does come out, and Phoenix is there this as well. It's actually a pretty decent fight for uh, for Dread Pirates. Like all of the all of the major ults, Cocoon didn't get any value. We had uh, we had every, every all the other major ults used. Not a lot of value. We've got a good silence coming on, but just not much that they can do to really follow up this silence. Uh, they probably shouldn't be fighting this either. I mean, four is just two globes waiting for Queen's Consort, but we do have Ember getting really low. We have Hollis getting really low. We have a lot of healing coming out, and now it's only three right. for the double globes. So I don't think this is really worth it unless they want to like bait out another fight, possibly get a couple kills before this stop or starts. But this is really risky. A lot of damage coming out. Uh, we have Hollis being knocked back in. Hollis getting really low damage over time yeah. on him, but he is an Anubarak. He just needs to press W and he's fine. Uh, and I thought about this too. I mean, W build into all this damage over time. This Anubarak is going to feel unkillable and he's going to get really scary really fast. They keep putting a lot of pressure on Delurker, on Johanna. They keep focusing Johanna. And, you know, with all of that happening. I mean, Nazebo is completely out of mana, did get his stacks, but the Arcane Punisher does go over to Queen's Consorts. And here's another big engage in the binds, taking Urel out of that stay a while, but Bat Mary is just so low right now, and Maev is able to get that kill. Uh, Dread Pirates wanting to fight on the other side of this fort, maybe behind the keep wall, but this will bring Queen's Consorts to the point where they have now taken down two forts. Two forts. And honestly, this is still a healthy Punisher. And they're going for a camp. They're going to try to take a keep here. And against the Nazebo comp, that's pretty much done for the Nazebo. Uh, he needs to get to 20 before he loses a keep. Or else the entire game, you're just on defense pretty much. So this is a very tricky situation. Uh, we do see right. that they pulled the Punisher away. It'll take out the Fountain instead of doing any damage to the keep, which is really good. Uh, but we honestly, Queen's Consort's like, you know what? We're just going to yeah. paint the map blue. We're right. just going to get all the experience available on the map, make it harder for Nazebo to get up there. And and they're going to, they're like, we'll just win the next objective again. Nazebo still won't be level 20, and we'll have the next objective. Next objective will likely be going mid lane, which means that. Uh, It'll take all the forts, possibly even a keep. And if Queen's Consort gets 16, they're going to take this fort mid for free. And then they're going to go straight through with the objective and they'll get their first keep on this objective. So we really need to get that experience coming out from uh, from Dread Pirates. And the best bet, I would say, is honestly let Nazebo push for a while and then have everyone else hide in a bush and see if they can get a pick. Because when you're behind an experience, the fastest way to get experience is... To see if you can get a kill. Um, I don't think Nazebo was the pick here. I don't think that Queen's Consorts cares which heroes were picked. They got a pretty decent pick, and the Warden's Cage does come out here. And Sir Stiggles falls into that. Stay a while. Uh, oh, Stukov is in the cocoon, and this is relentless damage going out. Stukov is not looking good. He does die. Bat Mary cannot live. And as you stated, here they are. Now they're at mid keep pushing this. But I don't think that Nazebo was a threat to them from the start here. They set up a wombo combo. Bottom line, Warden's Cage, Phoenix, uh, with that stay a while. And, and it's been paying off for them. Plus, they're getting every camp as it spawns. There is not a camp that's red on this map right now. And, and that's, I mean, that's the experience that... Uh... The Dread Pirates needs for this comm. And to be completely honest, even if this Nazebo did hit 20, and uh, this is kind of the sad truth about the comp that they drafted into, even if the Nazebo does hit 20, you have a bunch of damage over times that is, I mean, you're throwing them out that can be blocked by Beetles, they can be right. blocked by a Nubarak, which then gives him cooldown reduction, which gives him movement speed and more damage. Then you are, your, your Beetles are going to be hitting people that can just get healed up. As well as on the objective, your beetles are going to be hitting... Or sorry, you're not your beetles. Your, uh, your toads are just going to be hitting the objective. So even in the best case scenario where Queen's Consort does nothing for the next five minutes, uh, it's still mm -hmm. an uphill They're battle. They're looking for a gank like, on Bat Mary, though. 
Maybe. The Ooh, there comes oh, the oh, root, oh. but it misses from Deckard, and the binds the do get. E. Oh my oh, gosh. And that is that poison spear, or was it the fire? I can't tell, but wow. <clears throat> it was definitely the fire, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot coming out on that URL. Didn't even have the ult off cooldown yet, and this will be a keep before the shrine even spawns if they want it. And they've got the experience lead. They could go straight for this if they want to. Honestly, they, <laughs> I'd probably just cocoon the uh, the uh, the Joanna and just call it a day. Looks like they're going to cocoon the Sylvanas and just take the keep. And then they'll be able to get the keep. They'll be able to get a shrine. The shrine will get them another keep and likely end out this game. Uh, a yeah. lot of damage coming immediately onto the Sylvana. She almost gets out, immediately gets grabbed by the uh, the Maev, and a pretty good ult coming out from the Stukov, but unfortunately it's not going to be enough. This actually could be game here with Wrath of the Berserker. It's a ton of siege damage. There are catapults uh, available. It looks like the catapults are still shooting it here at the moment, so they're not going to go for it. They're going to get the free shrine while they still have the lead, and they're going to go from there. That engagement... Uh, led them back to the bruiser here. Uh, relentless, non-stop siege pressure onto the side of Dread Pirates by Queen's Consorts. If you're Dread Pirates, how do you think you come back at this point? Can you come back? They're level 15. They're not 16. Um, how do you feel I, that they I can make a comeback? Think, I, I honestly think they lost in draft before they even started this. And the challenge right. with coming back in, with a, a Nazebo comp is finding your 20, right? Finding how you can get to level 20. And then looking at the, the what's available on the map and going, what can we do to get that 20? He's already fully stacked if he hits 20. Uh, we can see he is at uh, 198 stacks. He'll be at 200 by the time this wave's there. But it's, it's pointless. There's no point in fighting over this objective. It's free for uh, Queen's Consort whenever they want it. So right. what they should be doing here is they should just be trying. If Queen's Consort wants to stall out this game, let them stall out this game. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to need to come down to some really, really lucky fights, some really good silences from the uh, the Sylvanas before they get comboed on, and they need to engage. I think they need to let the Punisher push in, and they need to fight behind the Punisher, try to sneaky a kill on like one or two of the backline targets, and make the fight on their terms. But unfortunately, with the Nazebo, I don't think they have the damage to even kill their backline. Uh, things right. just get interrupted too easily. Big too Toad's many coming escapes, out. not enough blow up. Punisher's Definitely. a little confused right now. Those toads are looking massive as they hop at Queen's Consorts, but the root does come out, and Delurker is met by Ember, and the Punisher will stay a while, and Warden's Cage comes out. It's looking pretty devastating. Uh, Urel does use her ultimate, and Delurker is trying to hang on. Mystic just needs to find a safe place to be able to spread those heals, but Looks we have like this Zebo Punisher. probably going to die right as he comes out. Now, Ooh. he did throw out a good ice block but this game is looking pretty grim as everyone's just hitting the core immediately and this game is going down so that is now two games in favor of queen's consort and one game in favor of dread pirates so we are going on to game number four and wow. let's see how we can look at what was going on that game like and this is again this is showing just a little bit about the numbers in particular i mean if you look at nazebo's numbers uh he out hero damage out siege damage anyone on the enemy team but it was all irrelevant because the damage was so spread out and so easily healed that it didn't matter at all and he wasn't even 20 i think even if they got to 20 their team comp just couldn't finish anyone and they were still at risk of just being charged on the entire time Right. So I think in general, it was just a pretty rough uh, draft. They were so excited to get their, their Sylvanas that they gave the enemies everything that was meta. And it's just rough. Yeah, there's uh, little logic to uh, what was picked on the side of Dread Pirates there. I, I don't know. I think it was experimental. And, and we did see an experimental draft from Queen's Consorts, I think, the first game, to be honest. Um, I just messed up the map tool, so we'll never look at it again. My bad, everyone. You'll never see it again. <laughs> You're good. We, we only have one or two more maps, so we'll see. If this goes in favor of uh, Dread Pirates, then we'll see a game number five. And if not, then uh, this may be it right here. Yeah. I am curious. Where will we be going? 
I am going to ask. We will see. I, I saw Sky Temple up, and I think at this point that might be a good map for uh, Dread Pirates to take. Like they, they did okay on the team fight map. They did lose on, on macro, though. Maybe they don't want to take the enemy team to a map that's so macro heavy. I think maybe they want to take the team to another map that is um, maybe more team fight oriented. I wonder. Dragonshire was banned. Is Brax's holdout available? It is not, but I can tell okay. you where we're going, and it is my second favorite map. It's Tomb of the Spider Queen. Tomb of the Spider Queen, okay. So not as much macro, a uh, decent amount of team fights. This could be a good map for Dread Pirates to take this back. Uh, they just need to look at their drafts again and take something that is a little bit more, uh, I would say, aggressive. Um they can okay. my i think my worry about it is again it's not a great map for li ming and that was the comp that they did the best with was that li ming composition so uh, maybe they can get a different reset character that's a little bit better like a genji uh, or they could go for something interesting with a stacking comp this is a map that tends to get level 20 uh so they could like these are the maps that people run zebo on usually yeah, well, I can tell you that I've seen Queen's Consorts play this map and uh, just the way they do play it, I know that Dread Pirates has to be aware of their strategy. I have not seen a single fort go down from their side when they have played this well. Um, they tend to dominate here, and if they get that momentum going, it's going to be a quick game. I'm excited. It, it's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see if they go for the Zera tool again. Uh, again, this map tends to get to 16, tends to get to 20. It just depends if there's even a double or a triple turn in from one team, the game's over. But if it keeps going back and forth, this is a map that almost consistently hits 20 in the competitive scene. So right. I I wouldn't mind seeing the Nazebo now, but they can't give them a, a new Brock and then take Nazebo. They need to take the new Brock on their side or they need to ban a new Brock. Uh, but it seems like both teams are going to stick with their target bands and go from there. Uh, we'll see, though. We are entering Tomb of the Spider Queen, the draft. We're just waiting a little bit. I'd imagine we're going to see the same bands. We're going to see... I mean, they they dealt with the Sylvanas. I, I wouldn't even ban the Sylvanas. I would just let it go through again. I mean, that they didn't even need to worry about it at all. So right. I'm a little surprised that it wasn't the Slithering one on... Uh, or Slithering one on... Um, on Sylvanas. I mean, that's like his best hero, and they threw it onto Sir Sigils through just moved everything around. So we do see the <laughs> the Blaze, the the Jaina, pretty <laughs> standard. Jaina again, and, Lucio getting banned yeah. this time. Uh there is one particular pick uh that if it makes it through is pretty devastating. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say what it is. There's the Anubarak first. I feel like Dread Pirates, even though they're not great with Zeratul, I feel like they have to take the Zeratul here uh, just to take it away. If if Queen's Consort gets a Nubrock Zeratul, uh, it's over. I mean, Maev's open to one or the other, and unfortunately, Mayog's going to get another very powerful pick. I don't know if it's worth it for them to keep banning. Um... Um, there's... Okay, so... There we go. Slithering one's on his Sylvanas time. Stiggles, Kael'thas. Again, two early mages against an Anubarak. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I know. I don't know if that's the best call there. Last time I saw Queen's Consorts on this map, it was against a KT. The KT did not fare well, but we see a Gul'dan and a Mayog picking up a Maiev. <laughs> a Maiev being picked up by Mayog. Jeez Louise. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, oh, that's the ban, Yorick. These choke points, the way that uh, Queen's Consorts engages on the other team with that Leoric and Tomb is devastating. And that being out of the picture, I'm curious to see how they're able to pull through. But what I was going to say, and this is actually a shout out to Mayog, I haven't seen Mayog play a hero not well. Mayog has done well on any assassin I've seen him play, to be honest yeah. with you. His hero pool is pretty big, and each of the heroes he's played are very impactful. Yeah, definitely. 
And uh, I, I think they should have stuck with meta bands, honestly. I, I, as much as Yonners plays a good Jaina, I don't think it's worth dealing with Maev uh, or Zeratul. We do see the Stitches and a Rhaegar, both actually rather odd picks. Um, yeah. I'm curious at what their plan with that is. Neither one yeah, really know. fits this map very well. I mean, Stitches can certainly get some interesting hooks, possibly some Gorges, but this map, if you lose even one objective, your Gorges are... It's going to be hard to gorge people into, like, structures because one objective kills all the front walls. Yeah, so I, don't... I don't know if that's the best call here. And then Deckard, Sonya, we saw the value of that last game. Uh, Maiev pulled everyone in, Deckard rooted everyone, Sonya just spun around and killed everyone. Yeah, um, I'm seeing an issue on draft again for Dread Pirates. I'm not going to count them out here. I mean, I want to see us go to another game after this. But depending on what they pick, I mean, Queen's Consorts is looking super strong here. I mean, Kel'thas can do a lot of damage, certainly. And I love Sylvanas. Sylvanas for life. But I'm a little confused. Imperius, here we go. And so this is going to be interesting. Imperius does pretty well against Sonya, um, but at the same time, it's not a map that you need to win the solo lane. It's just a map that you need to play together, uh, clear, win objectives, and uh, try to find a way to get momentum in a certain lane, usually top lane, get a momentum with a, a boss destroying a fort, and then having a boss push to get a keep. The draft out of... Uh, out of Dread Pirates really scares me, honestly. It uh, seems like a very sketchy draft. Yeah. Uh, they're, it, it's all over the place. Like If you were going for like a Stitches, Hook, Gorge combo, then that's one thing. Uh, if you were going for a Sylvanas blow-up combo, that's that's one thing. But it seems like they didn't... It seems like their picks got banned, their, their strategy got banned, which is a little bit of a challenge. I mean, we both these teams play together so much and, and members have moved from one team to another. So their strategies are open. Everyone knows what everyone's strategies are. So it's, it's a little bit of a yeah. struggle, but anyways, we are getting into game number four and on the blue side, we have Queens consort with Mayog playing Maev once again, verifying Maev Hollis on a new Brock. Once again, Ember on uh, Sonia again, and we've got the Gul'dan on with Yonners this time, and Doctor Holiday playing the Deckard Kane. And on the red side for Dread Pirates, we have Delurker on Stitches, Mystic playing Rhaegar, Sir Stiggles on the Kelthos, Slithering one on Sylvanas, and Imperius played by Bat Mary. Let's give it up for what could be the last game if we're able to see Queen's Consorts take this. Uh, Let's give it up for Dread Pirates. All right. So we are getting into this game. Really, the strategy on this game for the early side is to get a really good pattern of double soaking for your team. And as long as you can do that, then your team's in a really good spot. It looks like right off the bat, the pressure is being put uh, by Queen's Consort. They see what they have to do. They get all of the gems they need. A little bit of pressure being applied but not too much probably just there to stop the rotations a little bit a little bit of experience missed on dread pirate side but should still be able to get all of the gems they need and both teams are double soaking i'd right. like to see dread pirates go for something a little bit here so they don't just get interrupted and let queen's consort do whatever they want to I'd like to see them try to get a sneaky hook maybe kill like the, the gul'dan early because the gul'dan's a lot of their wave clear and if they could get mm -hmm. rid of gul'dan they're in a good spot but we do have slithering one a little bit in a rough position um some damage right off the bat he will get chained pulled in Ooh, immediately Mayog going into harass slithering one Sylvanas having to use her E to get out. One thing I was going to say before we came into this game was that, you know, yeah, okay, Dread Pirates picked a weird comp, and that hook can be rough, but, I mean, we have the vulnerability on Gul'dan with really no escape, but I feel like everyone else has a pretty decent escape. Obviously, Deckard Kane is just a slow old man with a stick and some pots, but uh, that... Hollis and his interrupt, if someone did try to gank his teammates, would just counteract what they were trying to do. So uh, perplexed, you know, I'm a bit perplexed, but I'm excited to see how they execute on this as they scale. Definitely. And it is, I mean, right off the bat, again, the macro play. We, we've seen this out of 
Queen's consort for two games in a row now. They get the camps early. They get them uh, at great times. They get this experience lead. And when the objective starts popping up, which in this case, the objective is always available, uh, they're ready to go. And so they're starting off with a lot of pressure. It's going to be very difficult to deal with. We saw the camps starting to be picked up by Dread Pirates, but unfortunately, they just weren't able to get it fast enough as they had to defend mid lane. Right. But in this case, we can see that the, uh, the Queen's Consort, they're, they're still covering the lanes in every area. So while a lot of experience is being missed from Dread Pirates, there's no experience being missed from Queen's Consort. They're keeping the macro up this entire game. I think, unfortunately, Dread Pirates, where they shined by out fighting the enemies uh queen's consort is realizing that as long as they don't take uh just dumb fights they they're gonna win this easily and we do have a uh, an invade coming in they've got one level lead at the moment Ooh, but a little bit too uh, late a little too late but yeah overall i mean <laughs> really i think queen's consort just needs to play out their macro game like they've been doing um both teams are gonna be very close to turning in in just a second and we have the full available turn in for dread pirates right now if they want to go for it but it looks like they're going to just be applying pressure not worrying too much about the turn ins mainly just uh we've got 29 gems on delurker so if he could get that turn in that would be really good he does get pulled in just a little bit right there but overall the camp should be cleared out relatively easily by Queen's Consort. No one got a free turn in while Queen's Consort was distracted, though. Uh, and the gems are a little bit more spread out on Queen's Consort, so they can kind of turn in in different order. Uh, I think ultimately Stitches is going to need to find a turn in sooner than later. Yeah. All it takes is, you know, uh, again, here, a power spike, a meaningful team fight, and, and many gems are lost from one side or the other. Most likely, though, from Dread Pirates because Queen's Consorts is getting those turn-ins as they go along. Deluker yep. is just struggling to get any. He can't. They just have yeah. to follow him the entire game. So uh, we do see the hook build coming out from Stitches. Pretty straightforward. He's going to go for a hook, try to get a gorge, and see if they can cheese a, a kill or two. Uh, I will say that the, the challenge with this is, again, Sanubrak has beetles. I mean, oh, that is a good hook, but no follow-up. Yeah unfortunately um so he's got to be careful because he needs to hook on unsuspecting targets but if the new brock sees him at all then these hooks aren't going out we've got a new brock going in a little low on mana he's still charging in though seeing if he can get any sort of kills we have a little bit of peel from the stitches and then he pretty much just walks out from there oh yana nice is definitely this is exactly the target they should be hooking and they do yeah. get a kill on a Gul'dan, and that's really what Dread Pirates needs. They need to be hooking Gul'dan, they need to be hooking Deckard every single time. Right. If they can hook either of those, they might have a chance in this game. But outside of that, it's going to come down to uh, really just Queen's Consort just slowly winning these. Uh, another interrupt coming out. He needs to immediately keep channeling. And this could be a turn-in, actually. Hmm. First objective of the game is going to be going out to Dread Pirates, which is pretty good for them. They're still going to have the capability of gorging people into their uh, their forts, and they're also going to have a possibility for getting some front walls in another area, which front walls is going to allow maybe some crazier hooks, but we'll see. Yeah, well defended. Uh, with Gul'dan getting hooked, it definitely did show his lack of mobility. I did see that pot fall right in front of him, but he couldn't even move and just fell uh, I will note, though, that Queen's Consorts has been able to get the mid wall. I, I don't want to click over to the top wall. Actually, I'm going to look. They have it about at half health, just in case that hook does come out and <laughs> Stitches you know, does try to go for one of those, those engorge scenarios you were talking about. But it looks like it's a breeze to clean up this first wave here. I'm going to check out bottom lane. Uh, the wave coming out, Ember tapping, but able to, you know, pretty quickly take this spider down. Unfortunately, another wave will come out, and yep. that's first pretty much it. First objective usually only gets about front walls. If a team's a little bit ahead, they take top fort as a preparation for maybe a boss play. Uh, overall, this was not a bad objective. It could have gone better, but it also could have gone a lot worse. Uh, a lot of damage coming mm -hmm. out from Slithering One, but unfortunately, he used his uh, escape to do that damage, it. so he may end up dying. Yeah, not uh, gonna make it. Cleanse. 
Yeah, even with the cleanse from Rhaegar, it's just not enough. He unfortunately shouldn't have been the one to interrupt, especially before they hit 10s. If he hit 10, he might have been able to follow that up with a silence and possibly done a lot more damage and got out, but... Uh, yeah, now we see the turn forward. in for Queen's Consorts. You know, uh, Dread Pirates had just four gems left to have another turn in immediately, but with Sylvanas going down, they did lose about 12. And it looks like Queen's Consorts is going to prioritize top lane as well. Um, slowly having the rest of the team trickle in. Ember and the other offlaner are bot at this time. We do see the Bile coming out. Uh, so there is not going to be any Gorge plays here. They're simply just going for a Bile. Uh, makes me a little curious on why they decided to go with the Stitches, as uh, there were still a lot of other tanks that were up. Like a Garrosh, but, perhaps. I mean, Garrosh, even Joanna. I mean, Joanna would have had the wave clear they needed and could handle, the, not really need to worry about beetles at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little interesting. Garrosh and, and Joanna both had Unstoppable, so whenever the Warden's Cage comes out, they could simply just use Unstoppable and break all the Warden's Cages. But hmm. uh, I, Let's I'm Let's look a at bottom surprised. lane really quick. We see Ember harassing Bat Mary down here. Uh, spearing Bat Mary, whirlwinding Bat Mary, taking Bat Mary's life, and now mid fort is gone as well. It looks like Ember will be able to take this third fort, and we still have spiders in top lane and uh, just now dying in mid lane. That was pretty good coming out from the side of Dread Pirates Hollis here in the shadows with this bruiser camp looking for a gangster this Stiggles. Is, yeah, I'm like they're they're definitely looking yeah. for something here. Stiggles <laughs> almost got taken out, but he stayed in there. Oh, they're aware. Sylvanas just sent uh, her Banshees in, I believe, for Vision. And really nothing they could do here. Uh, level 13s are almost online for Queen's Consorts. They do have enough to turn in. Dread Pirates only needs three more, but I do not believe Dread Pirates will allow this to happen. They are going for the Interrupt. And this is an all-out brawl here. Bile zoning out a few people, but we do have a, a going in. I mean, we have the, the interesting thing is this Maya Volt's not doing much. The Maya Volt went out. Ooh, a great silence coming out, taking out the Maya. A lot of damage coming out onto Sonya, taking out the Sonya. This that's a lot of gems gone. Really, really well for uh for Dread Pirates, and yeah. they also dropped a lot of their gems. So they had they went from a full turn in to only half a turn in. And they're going to be able to get a, a turn in here. They could go for a camp or something first before the turn in if they wanted to. But it looks like they're just going to go for a turn in. I would actually invade. Uh, this Gul'dan and, and Deckard's going to take forever. They see the Gul'dan and Deckard are the only ones there. They could go for this invade. They could get this camp, push with the they're objective looking. and the camp. They're it looking. is what they do. They go yeah. for it. They take it. Maybe snuck a, a easy hook in there. We see the power of this Sylvanas now coming online. We've got the uh, that ult that will just silence a huge chunk of people. She can turn off structures here. They can push really, really far if they want to. But this is both team alive. Mm -hmm. Both teams, they're ready. They can take this fate. And it looks like Maiev's going in immediately for the back line. Doesn't get anyone. Uh, right. She doesn't have her Warden's Cage up for 25. We do have the Bile available. We do have the Angelic Armaments. We've got the Phoenix. Uh, but there is still a cocoon ready and a horrify, so it could go either way in any of these fights. Yeah, uh, you know the way that Queen's Consorts rotated to to uh, turn in there is the reason that you know they did go down. I mean, Deckard used his ultimate on just one person, and that left him vulnerable as well as the rest of his team without heals. Yeah. Um, and now we're seeing the, the repercussions. Oh, we've got a new rock going in immediately. Another Warden's Cage coming out. Uh, Sir Stiggle has popped his, his shield already. A great Ancestral comes out on him. A lot of damage going on to Mayog. Mayog gets taken out. Sony is in the back line trying to take out this Kael'thas, but Kael'thas is just simply walking around to tanks. We do have Imperius going down, and it looks like so far a one-for-one -one trade, possibly a hook going out, but unfortunately, I think the range is just a little too low right now. After 16s, though, if he does decide to pick up Fishing Hook, that could be kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. Both teams have now taken all forts from each other. A boss play on either team could be game-ending, and they're both at similar... Uh, amounts for turn-ins as far as that's going anyway. So <laughs> generally, they're in pretty even spots. 
Yeah, with the fire from Kelthos and the heavy melee on the side of Queen's Consorts, um, you know, that consistent spreading is just not doing them any favors, uh, as well as, you know, the W coming out from Sylvanas. Well, just the stacks in general from Sylvanas. Did she go the talent where her E's puts she three stacks? Yes, she did. So and the... her W is at 77, yeah. and she is getting a lot of stacks on targets. Now, she didn't go the armor removal, so she's not all in. Uh, she can get in, in into a, a fight and then jump out if she needs to. Right. Um, either way, it looks like both teams are posturing for maybe a Yeah, a Sonya's boss a little or behind, or boss, though. Sonya's a little we've behind. We've got level 16s. Yeah, Sonya's not there, but they also are fighting against 16s, so Dread Pirates probably won't try to take this fight. And there is that siege bottom... They're going to turn in what they have, you know, at least secure Pretty that safe. in the bank. Yeah. Mayog not really concerned with that. But, you know, Mayog has not been surviving for very long with all of the damage we were just talking about. So I think they have to figure out how to engage in a safe manner to allow those executions Ooh. to happen. Ooh, Sylvanas getting a little hyphy uh, <laughs> on that. All right. Now we're going to have the 5v5. They, we have the turn in though for it's Queen's 16s. Consorts. Yeah, we've got the turn in. Ember's going for it right now. Ooh, and Hollis looking low. We've got out a lot of damage. The cocoon almost did nothing because he took so much damage. The warden's cage immediately broken. Everyone's pulled in, but they're silenced. They can't follow up on the pull in. We've got the bile pulling back in Mayog. Mayog goes down. We have a lot of damage going out on Sonia. Sonia is getting slowed. And oh, but that root from she Deckard should though. Be taken out. Now Sonia's down. This is a boss play if they want it. They can take this boss for free. Yeah. Now on the other side, this is a perfect time to turn in. So at least you get something out of this. You're going to lose a boss guaranteed, but maybe you can at least get a turn in. And this way you are turning in. You might be able to apply some pressure at bot and mid while they are applying pressure top. So ultimately here, Dread Pirates needs to try to go for a keep and they need to push as far as they can. They need to make sure the minions don't push too far because they don't want the web weavers getting too close. So All it looks right. like they're going to clear up mid and then possibly go for top, or they're just going to clear up and take the trade and yeah. try to get as many gems so that they get a free turn in next time, which is looking like that's how they're going to play this out. I feel like Queen's Consorts can clear this boss pretty quickly, keep the momentum trying to uh, move that top. Uh, it probably, I mean, all of them will die before they even make it to another structure. But top is the weakest point right here. It didn't even get the wall down. One of the towers is gone top for Queen's Consorts. But now they have the spiders on their side. They can either choose to push or choose to try and gank. But with the way these team fights have been going, it's probably wise to play safely. Um, yeah. It's, it's, I don't know, it's though. I mean... Here's the thing. I mean, well, both teams kind of broke even on this particular trade, you need to remember that we have a full turn in available for Dread Pirates. If they get even a, a, another team fight like the one that they had, this could be free. Um, and that yeah. turn in could get a keep, maybe two, if they can get that turn in after a team fight. Uh, and they'll be able to clear this up pretty safely. It looks like Queen's Consort is going to see if they can sneak a keep, though. Or, or maybe they just see that the Bruiser somewhere. Camp's the next thing available. So yeah, they see that the Bruiser Camp is the next thing available. So they're going to either go for a bait here. Uh, mm, it's Ooh, a bait. It face, has to face be. Check this. Oh, they're face checking. Ooh. They're going for a, a oh bile. Look at all this damage. Just silence shredded. Melted the, the Nubarak. He couldn't do anything about it. We have Fishing Hook who pulls back in Mayog. Mayog's dead. We have a camp available, a turn in available, and three people dead. This could be a double keep here if they want it. Uh, they could even start the enemy's camp, but it looks like they don't need to do that. They just need to push in. Uh, honestly, I would say middle and bottom. If they push in both of these lanes, that gives them boss free next time it's available. We see a possession quickly grabbing one catapult for them. They might even turn off the structure to see if they can get the keep here. I, they may be posturing for ending the game, but there's no way they end the game with no. the enemy team going to be available in the next 20 seconds. Yeah, but they, uh, they need to play it safe because, uh, you know, death timers are rising and one well-played team fight can turn this around structure that structure top is very low um it could it could come down to a, a core race <laughs> you know with red team spawning uh, if you know they don't lose everything here and we're having 20s approaching for dread pirates and some of the upgrades for that we're going to be seeing 
Um, an unstoppable out of uh, out of Imperius, we might be seeing um, a, a very tanky Stitches. We've got a Horrify coming out. Are they going to be taking this fight before level 20? It looks like, honestly, I think Dread Pirates needs to just play this a little safe until 20, but they do have the advantage. They won the last team fight. Cage we've got out. Again, silencing two people, and they're getting really low. We see the Sylvanas just taking out as many targets as she can, just jumping around as in the rest of the fight everyone else is taking too much damage sonia is getting really low we have sylvanas who simply just jumped in the back line blew up a few people killed some and then jumped away right afterwards wow. and that is why sylvanas has been getting banned this entire time right as slithering one gets picked up on sylvanas this game is so heavily in favor of dread pirates it's not even funny uh we have mayog who's trying his best but mayog jumps in grabs a few people and then immediately gets silenced and killed and this right. is game number four in favor of dread pirates we're currently two to two two to two we're going to game five we're going to game number five that is incredible yeah i mean game the, the crazy part is these teams they they play against each other so much they know everything that each other like all all the little strategies that they do so even if one little thing's different i mean they they can still play it out so well i mean they throw up that's all they have to do they just have to throw them off with something they throw in his stitches when they're like wait i haven't seen him being playing stitches and he's sitting to himself going i've been playing stitches in storm league they just haven't been seeing it because i don't use it in scrims and then suddenly he's getting these biles that are locking down the entire enemy team so they can't follow up these my evan gauges yeah. And suddenly they've got this great team comp that's actually getting a ton of value. Uh, yeah, I loved crazy. how Dread Pirates played that. I, I saw their draft and I was like, I don't know what they're doing. And they just, they literally did a draft purposely so that, that uh, oh, sorry, Queen's Consort had no idea. They're, Queen's Consort's so used to all their regular things that when they threw in all these weird stuff, they're like, we don't even know what to do with this. So game five, uh, close either way. This is, I mean, incredible how close these games are. Yeah, it is. And, um, you know, I was looking at chat, and by the way, uh, chat was asking where we were on stacks. I did show it. They were at exactly 100, uh, Sylvanas, rather. Um, sorry, I was about to sneeze, but... <laughs> Sorry, there's in chat. No uh, are you reading chat at all? It says this is standard Mayog calling for the throw so they can make it more interesting and deliver a free win next game classic. <laughs> and a lot of shout outs to Bat Mary. Bat Mary. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling that we're gonna be seeing we're gonna be seeing something cheesy this next game. I know Maybe. Sir Stiggles when he drafts, when it's when it's game five, he goes for the cheat he always goes for the cheese so i i want to see the weirdest thing here i want to see an uther main tank i want to see some weird thing on i want to see four tanks on volskaya you know what i mean like we I are going to volskaya crazy. just so you oh, know i'm ready for it volskaya. i'm ready for the, the four tanks on volskaya well i'm excited I think need the lucio to make that work but maybe maybe just maybe they'll ban the um they're gonna ban the uh the sylvanas and the lucio might slide through they'll get the lucio they'll get the um they'll get the four tanks and they'll just have that four tanks on it is, this the, is this the time and place though to actually oh, do ready. something like that was, <laughs> your body's ready paradox you're ready you want this, this badly the, i i was talking to him about this comp and it was used by team octalysis on this very map volskaya and it worked really well and then when i told sigils about it he's like we got to try it and they tried it against a couple teams and they liked it but i don't know if that's what they're going to run with so we'll definitely see how it goes uh, i'm ready either way i know sigils goes with the cheese when you hit these uh when you hit these levels yeah, well, this is a this is the high stakes game here. Whoever wins this is the champion of Division A. I mean, if they want to cheese, they can and really be that glorious victor. You know, like oh yeah, we four tanked this Volskaya game <clears throat> easy, not even close, or <laughs> we tried hard and we won. Calculated. Definitely, we're gonna you know. see we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, it's gonna be interesting for sure.
But uh, Volskaya, I mean, I'm guessing we're going to see the same bands. I They didn't even worry about the Maev that last game. I, I think if they get their Sylvanas, they don't care if, if anyone gets Maev because they just blow up Maev. She, and, I mean, the early game was, was a little scary, but once she got her silence, I, I think... I honestly think Dread Pirates won every single fight after that silence was picked up. I mean, so. I think the bile had a lot to do with that. The bile was definitely when you take down the tanks. Really good. Yeah, what because good they, is no my one F. could walk around it. Which it's interesting because I feel like what Slithering One used to play uh, whenever his Sylvanas' banned was he would pick up Thrall and then he would just go Earthquake, and that would kind of do the same thing as the bile. So. I want to say that it could, maybe he's been holding back that the entire time. I don't know. So they, because I know Slithering One does play a lot of Thrall, and maybe this is the time where he's going to sneak that out uh, if if we see the, the ban. Because there's been a few heroes that that are in their rosters that I haven't been seeing. So, I mean, people no, evolve, those. but what I can say is those fights that we had where we saw the two tanks fall they were even the, those fights were on the terms of queen's consorts those were on the bruiser camp for dread pirates it's just unexpected you know here we are yeah. scoffing at the draft from dread pirates like okay that's weird uh stitches what you know why take that and then we just see the devastation left behind in his bile as well as the non-stop harassment from the rest of the team i mean i'm excited uh, before we get into game five of Division A Grand Finals, Queen's Consorts versus Dread Pirates, I just want to thank all of the viewers right now, everyone tuning in after your first priority, which is apparently Game of Thrones. <laughs> Here, game of Thrones we made it. Yep. We made it to a game five. This is it. It is all or nothing. I'm going to let the teams know. We're going to go to Volskaya. It's two to two right now. Game five, can't say it enough. All right, let me let them know. I'm ready. This is it. Ooh, getting nervous. Yep, I know. I'm, I, I'm a little nervous. I'm they're nervous too. This is this is all their bragging rights right here because they play against each other so much. If if either team wins, you know they're never gonna let the other team down for the rest of this for the rest of the year for until next. <laughs> tournament that they can go they're never gonna let this down this is as much bragging rights as it is anything else and yeah now i do want to talk a little bit about uh dread pirates they were division c last time wow. and they all just worked as a team they moved up they dominated in division c they got paired against division b teams they beat division b teams and then this season when the new system came out uh, they got put into Division A, and they were considered the lowest in Division A uh, when their ranks were out. So they are honestly just killing it. Uh, we do wow. see the Li Ming ban coming out. That was the strategy from Sir Stiggles in the past. And we see the Diablo ban again. It looks like we're never going to see Hollis's Diablo in this uh, five man, unfortunately, or in these uh, five games, unfortunately. Which is uh, but fine. with that leaving ban and the Sylvanas ban, that's the that, respect that, ban. That means that you know. Lucio is open if they want to go for it, and this could be the four man, which would be interesting. Of course, the Jaina ban. So we <laughs> Yonners see, uh, will never get to play Jaina. Confirmed, get to play not in the grand finals. Jaina has not been available once. Rip. All right. There's the Anubarak for the first pick. And let's see what they decide to do to handle this Anubrock, or if they're just going to pick their draft. I I really want to see the four tank. Like it, Anubrock can't even counter it. They they really can't because if he cocoons, <laughs> he cocoons anyone, he can't kill the other four people before they can get him out of the cocoon. There there's All no right, way. Well... Oh, that is not the four tank. But those are still good picks. We do have Bat Mary finally on the blaze. Do you uh, suspect a bunker or a combustion? A bunker, pretty sure. Against a Nubarak, he's going to cocoon someone. The bunker drops. Everyone can stay alive until the, the cocoon's broken, and then they can get back into the fight. So for sure, it'll be a bunker. Now the Maev picked up Maiev again, this time on a... More significant heals. I think that was one of the issues. I know Deckard 
has, you know, those roots and that synergy was excellent. Too bad the Leoric just gets banned. But the Ana has potential for much greater healing and also with her grenade just giving that debuff. I am not surprised to see Thrall banned. You did mention Thrall being a, picked up by Dread Pirates, but, you know, it's also a strong hero just in general on this map. Uh, and I wouldn't have been surprised if Mayog picked Thrall up mm -hmm. either, but went with that Maev again. But, no, that was it. I mean, the I, I said Slithering one. He might go for it just because he hasn't shown it this game and he's got a really good Thrall. It's almost as scary as his Sylvanas. Uh, and we do see these stitches. And the Lucio, wait, are we doing it? Are we? It's not four tanks, hmm. but maybe it's three tanks and a Kael'thas. If If they don't do it, I will put a group together and we'll do it, okay? Just so you can have that. But... Malthale's still available, unfortunately. So they if you were gonna do that comp, you need to ban Malthale or this won't work at all. Especially since they have an Ana. Ana Malthale and then they nano the Malthale. That is gonna be insane if they do pick this Malthale here. Oh, but it's a Rainer and oh, a Rexar. Those are the Rexar. Oh that skin. It Interesting. just it, it looks like a sports bra with a bear face. Alright, Zul Jin picked up. Interesting. Nothing special. Paradox. Nothing too special. But no. they're ready. We're seeing, all right, y'all, let's do this. Let's do this. Which draft do you like better? <clears throat> you know, I I like them both. I think with the the blaze and the stitches in the front line, Maev's going to be able to get a lot of damage resets constantly. I don't really like the Rexar pick that much. Ultimately, the this map isn't really one of them you need to win the solo lane. It's more you need to win these team fights. So I don't think Rexar is going to bring enough to the game, um, but it's a couple different stuns that aren't bad. Uh, Zul'jin's going to be pretty good at melting down the Anubarak. I mean, it's physical damage, so his shields aren't going to be that big of a deal. Lucio is Mystic's best hero, so we're going to be seeing him finally on the hero that he, he wants to play. But there's not a lot of answers to the cocoon. I mean, really, it's just going to be a bile again and crossing your fingers. I mean, bunker, bile, and go from there. Anyways, right. on to the left team. Uh, we have, for the game five, the final game, Queen's Consort. We have Hollis on Anubarak. We have Mayog on Maev. We have Dr. Holiday on Ana, And we have Yawners on the Rainer, and finally we have Ember playing Misha. I mean Rexar. <laughs> on the red team. Uh, on the red team, we have Mystic on the Lucio riding these walls and those like sweet roller blades. The Lurker playing Stitches. Bat Mary on the Blaze, slithering one on Sol Jin, and Sir Stiggles on KT. Game five, Division A Grand Finals. This is Dread Pirates. Also, quick observation, quick statement. Uh, yeah, the Rexar was picked up, but we saw the Leoric band. You know, Bat Mary got the Blaze. Uh, the hero pool for uh, Ember was pretty uh, non-existent after that. The Sonya isn't that great into that those flames by KT. So I think that's why we ended up with Rexar here. Definitely. I, I, I really was expecting a... Uh a mouth l i mean a nanode mouth l melts through an entire team and not only that but his only major counter is an ana who can turn off his healing and they had the ana and they were against double frontline tanks i mean that's that's really what i was expecting but otherwise i still like the maya for melting down the frontliners she's gonna get easy resets uh the rexar is being quite a bully down in the bottom lane we do have again queen's consort they know the macro yeah they know that they should be getting camps early on one minute they start the camp they have just enough people to take the camp they're still soaking every lane that's the one thing queen's consort is definitely winning at almost every time in these games is the macro but when you get into team fights dread pirates they have their team fights down mechanically mm -hmm. they play so well uh, but honestly, Dread Pirates isn't too far behind. They do lose their stitches. Uh, so they both get their, their camps there, but it shouldn't be too hard for them to still hold their uh, their lanes. Now, with the stitches dead, they are going to take the, the heal camp. That is a really fast heal camp pickup, yeah. to be honest. I mean, that's a lot of damage. This is, uh, I know, that was very quick. Usually it's like, all right, let's hack at this thing for a while, but it, it just disappeared and disintegrated. Um, yeah, I will say that Queen's Consorts, I've seen them play this map as well. 
uh, and their macro is insane. They have the timing down so much so that they're able to get two turrets, it seems, before each objective so that everyone on the team has a toy in hand. Um, but none of that matters if you can't live through a team fight or use them appropriately. So <laughs> let's see what happens. We do see level five online for Queen's Consorts at this time, level four for Dread Pirates. I'm gonna just quickly go over the talents for all inquiring minds. Uh, pure W build, it looks like, for Nubarak and, and the standard there for Ana. Uh, nothing really special. I'm not even worth going over here, but there it is. For those of you watching, you can take a look. Yep. Generally about the same. Uh, I would say everyone's in a pretty standard build uh, for for this particular map. Delucio, he is picking up the uh, push off cooldown, just allows him to play a little bit more aggressive. Uh, we have Stitches going a, a little bit different build than he went last time. He is getting the cooldown reduction on his W. Uh, or his W is going to cool down some other abilities instead of getting the percent health. Uh, we do have a bit of an engage going mm. on. Maev only pulls the stitches. We do have that heal camp, though, that needs to be killed off pretty quickly. Stitches is getting really low. Uh, very easy for them to peel off for their team. I mean, they pretty much just had a stun from Blaze coming out, a knockback from Lucio, and they were able to keep the stitches alive. Now the heal camp's gone. Level 7s are going to be approaching a lot faster for Queen's Consort, so... They, it looks like we're going to be going for just top, actually. Right. For uh, looks like Dread Pirates is just going to give up the objective, maybe, and just push top. Uh, they have some and... time still. I, they may give it up because they aren't seven, but we can see here Ember is already on the turret camp once more. Fortification camp, rather, being picked up. Another turret in hand as the first protector goes over to Queen's Consorts, and you know, they. Uh, strut its stuff a little bit before most likely taking it top to get that well. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it, I mean, they can't take too long on it. Uh, the early game siege damage has been dropped a little bit on the gunner side. Uh, so it, as well as the, uh, the kill huh. pressure is going to be dropped. So it looks like they're not going to go for no, this the is, fountain. This is the play. This is the play to distract them while the rest of Queen's Consorts continues to soak XP and get further ahead. Interesting. <laughs> it, is, it is an option. I mean, but are they really soaking that much? I mean, we've got Kael'thas who's still soaking top. We've got Blaze He just went bottom. top, though. That It was it kind of funny true. for a second. It's I mean, true. a little bit. A I little mean, bit. It leaves them open to get ganked, though, I if that's like what they I feel like they would have gotten more experience by simply just taking top. But, right, I right. mean, hey, they are getting the the uh, heal camp once again. Unless this is going for a fight, it doesn't look like they're ready for it yet. They don't have their ults, and ultimately, we this is what happened last game for Dread Pirates. Is like Before the Bile came out, before the Silence came out, they really struggled, so... Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be the same thing. They're going to take what they can take safely, and they're going to wait until 10s and cross their fingers. Yeah. Now, we do have an invade coming in, possibly, here. Uh, Hollis is a little out of position, but he's a new rack. He can always just yeah, jump wherever his life. he wants to. His out-of-position life. Chat asking now, they to did keep... save. they did save their turret from the first objective. Yeah. So both teams should be, should be holding on to some turrets now. Both teams have two. Why drop it if you don't need to? Chad is asking to update frequently on the stacks for Zul'jin. Currently at 12 stacks. Uh, if you can help me remember to just randomly sure. shout those out so I don't have to constantly bring up the massive talent selection <laughs> screen at the bottom. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, we're still working on Headhunter, of course. No kills yet for Headhunter. Uh, and he is uh, he's going to be at three hero damage but uh yeah should be getting getting rolling pretty soon and tens are online for both teams i'm just going to go over queen's consort selections warden's cage is that release the boars unleash the boars yes. hyperion the boars. nano boost and the kakuna for anubarak uh quickly if you want to go over dread pirates if we don't yeah. get a massive Dread engagement Pirates picked here. up the Phoenix, nothing too crazy there. Sound barrier just for the survivability. Taz Dingo to make sure that he can't be blown up. He's their primary damage. Then we have Bile. We saw the value. Oh, we have an engage coming in right now. Ana Yon takes a lot of damage. 
jumps in, takes out Yonners quickly. That is one headhunter stack onto the <clears throat> the Rainer, and they blow up the fountain. They don't need to win the objective to win the to get this fountain. Now they're set up for the next uh, fight if they want to. Again, we saw the value of Bile. Once he hooked anyone, he just immediately Biled. They couldn't get away from him, and then just that damage over time from the KT was was more than enough. With that one kill, they're they've got their confidence, and Dread Pirates is going to steal a a camp here. They still have bunker available in case there's any major fights going on. They pretty much oh they take oh, out Misha, Misha pretty quickly. Poor little now, Misha. We do have a uh, oh wow a hook onto Nubarak. A little bold. I have a feeling that was a helping hand going for the Zuljin that missed. We have three turrets on the side of Dread Pirates for this. Uh, next objective, I believe only one turret available for Queen's Consort. I could be wrong. Nope, Misha or uh, Rexar has one now. <laughs> Wouldn't that so. be great if Misha could pick one up too? That would be pretty great. Jeez, that would be, uh, that would be so awesome. All right, so now they've seen this. You know, they lost Towers of Doom to the Stitches, just putting the putrid bile everywhere. If you're Queen's Consorts. How do you actually answer to that? It is devastating. I mean, how do you answer to that? I mean, I think what they're going for is they're just going to see if they can out macro and maybe hit a power spike. The burst damage from a level 16, uh, uh, what's her name, Maev, uh, once she gets her stacks and everything, it can be really high. You nano boost her and you can almost one shot the Lucio. And so maybe their goal is to just kind of hang out, but they can take any of these fights if they want. They have double heal camp. They could win these fights pretty easily as long as they don't get hooked out of position. We do have a great stun coming oh. out from Bat Mary into the bunker to keep them alive. It did stop the chain from going off on the the Maev. The first or the second objective of the game goes down uh, now in favor of Dread Pirates. And just an amazing stun. He was able to scare them off quickly. We do see the... Uh, they're just going straight for top keep. They don't worry about the uh, the fountains at all because they were able to take the fountains without the objective. So it looks like they're just going to apply a lot of pressure up here, possibly go for mid and keep that experience lead for the rest of the game. Uh, they're going for kills, but remember that this objective has been adjusted to where it doesn't do as much damage to heroes until the late game. And then the scaling of the gunners, the only thing that really does a lot to heroes. It's mainly a siege beast in the early game. So 25 stacks on Zul'jin. Uh, definitely a great job by Dread Pirates in keeping, you know, Queen's Consorts at bay. Yawners is very vulnerable on that Rainer, I've noticed in these fights. Uh, I mean, they had two biotic emitters healing them and still couldn't push past, you know, that stitches. And with the sustain that you saw in the build that he's going, it's just unexpected. It is. It is. The stitches came out of nowhere. And we do have another fight. Shields and oh. Ember's going down immediately. Unkillable out of Zul'jin, so they can't even get to him. They're doing a lot of damage to Anubarak, and he can't do anything about it. Now, level 13s. No major power spikes from either teams that are that big, but some things to, to talk about. We do have the net coming out of Zul'jin, so if anyone ever gets out of position, they're going to get hit by a net, get rooted. Uh, the big power spike for Lucio's at level 16 does percent health healing, so with the amount of health bars that they have on their team, it's going to be huge. Uh, but we do have some major power spikes from both teams when they get 16. It's going to be interesting. Uh, again, right. still the Rexar is such an odd pick, as team fights are not very strong. Whenever these team fights happen, it's just such huge value coming out of Dread Pirates every time. Yeah, this this is a late game map too. I mean, we just have top four down, and the macro is still in the eyes of you know queens consorts. They're keeping an eye on it. Granted, uh, dread pirates did take their fortification camp. Uh, Misha is. Oh, we have an oof. Age, it looks like we've got the Anubra coming into the back line. He's gonna cocoon and go in. Uh, looks like he doesn't cocoon first. He just goes in first, cocoons the Zul'jin. And again, we could just simply have a bunker to stop any of this if they needed it. They don't even need the bunker. They simply just take the fight. They The cocoon goes off too late, and they just take the fight. They get a, a what, a two and a half for, for nothing. And they're going to be able to take this bottom for free. So now they're going to have two forts. They're going to get 16s before them. And that'll be right around the next objective. Now, this is rough. Um, those flames are just doing a lot of damage. I'm going to pull up the damage for those watching right now. 
uh, if we look, we see Kelfos has done about 30k damage in comparison to the highest, which is Rainer on the side of Queen's Consorts. It is spreading nonstop in these team fights, and I don't know. It's rough times. It definitely is. This is going to be pretty crazy. I mean, so much damage is going out. They've got 16s. They're taking the advantage. They only end up pulling the Blaze. The Blaze just hits a bunker. And he just hangs out. We've got a net onto a Nubarak. He tried to get out. Easy bunker. It's literally just bunker Phoenix, and you can't sit and try to damage the, the bunker because the Phoenix is just killing you. With level 16s, they are taking everything that they want. Yeah. Oh, there is going to be a fight here, oh. though. A couple ults were used. The bunker was already used. They're going for the fights. We've got the Ooh, healing the camp. The Warden's Cage comes down, and the healing camp is out. Break It Down comes out, or Sound Barrier comes out. Hollis is running with that fl those flames, but Zul'jin's W is just doing way too much at this point. The team is retreating. Queen's Consorts is very low. Ember getting out. I don't think Misha made it. I'm too too afraid to look. I don't see Misha anywhere. Misha I can't handle it. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't. Oh I'm my sorry. god. Oh my god. It happened. Oh my god. That was such a risky fight. They were down 16s. They didn't have the heal camp. They didn't have any turrets, and they they took the just a, a pretty rough fight. I, I think they saw the bunker and the phoenix go out, and they said, "Oh, the enemies don't have any ultimate abilities, so let's go for a fight." But they still had. Taz Bingo, they still had Bile, they still had uh, Sound Barrier, they had everything else they needed to, to still win that fight at 16, so now there's 16s for both teams, while the majority of the camps are in favor of Dread Pirates, this fight could go either way I mean, we do have the debilitation from the Anubarak to turn off some of the spell damage of this Kael'thas you said how right. much damage this Kael'thas is doing Non-stop. One good debilitation could do it, I mean, if he could cocoon the Zul'jin and debilitate the Kael'thas, they could take a fight where the enemies have almost no damage. I mean, keep the Misha on the KT, cocoon the Zul'jin, and I don't know, then deal with the Bile. It's, it's, they're up against some rough scenarios here, but it looks like we're going to see, see how the they're going to handle it. see the being dropped. We see the stun coming out from the, the Blaze. Uh, a couple pulls, but not enough damage. It opened on the front line, and the bunker goes out. We see Anubarak just die almost immediately. Between the bile and the bunker, these cocoons are almost useless. Yeah. And Those... now they're chasing them down. They've got the slow. They've got a nice hook. They won the objective. This could be game number five right here. If they push really hard with it. We do have the blaze just chasing a nice sleep dart coming out from Doc Holiday, and then we have the Punisher, or sorry, the uh, Protector, pushing in. It's getting scaled up now, so it is getting to the point where it can do a lot of damage to heroes as long as the gunner is focusing on the heroes as well as the a ton of siege damage coming out from the protector if they just want to go for the siege. Are they going to play it safe and go for double keep or are they going to go for the game? I mean, everyone's about mm. up. I think playing safe is going to be the best way. Yeah. It's like that's what they're doing. He's quickly I mean... creating an out for his team. Yeah, it's definitely good to create an out. They they need to play it safe. Um, I cannot imagine how how much this game means to both of these teams. And you know, just overanalyzing every move, if you know if it does cost you a death or something, can be detrimental just to the morale in this type of scenario. As Queen's Consorts has the protector still uh still and they're like, getting yeah. close to level 20s at i mean we do have an engage health, coming out but unfortunately oof. the shields are going to come out from the protector here and once this protector goes down we're going to have a Ooh, the Zul'jin. available oh he pops we, we have a bunker that might be able to save this Zul'jin. unfortunately bunker came out a little too late we do have a bile this fight's actually going pretty good yeah. for uh for Queen's Consort. It really uh, it is. Looks like they may be able to take another Ooh, kill Hollis, here. Bunker's already down. Hollis dives in, and Delurker on that Stitches is looking to finally uh, maybe not be able to sustain. Ooh, the Mayog is able. Goes down. This was yeah. a rough fight. Now, I mean, that's that's exactly what Queen's Consort needed. They needed a good fight there. Unfortunately, they did have to lose both their keeps to get that fight, but they at least got a good fight. They can start stealing some camps possibly and getting prepared for the next objective if they can win this next objective they're still in the game it's going to be a real uphill battle but this is really what queen's consort needs they just need one more fight like that then they'll hit 20s and they'll be on an even playing field they need yeah. to try to get the heal camp here and i think they can get it pretty safely there's a lot of experience on the board 
what that fight taught us is that they can kill the right targets. Yes, the damage from KT is just miserable, but that Zul'jin is only getting stronger and stronger. Take him out, you know? Uh, that Stitches has yeah. been a nuisance to the front line. Take him out so that Queen's Consorts can actually have a front line. Uh, I would be careful, though, at this fortification camp because Dread Pirates is looking to invade. And because they know, now. Yeah, and they know... They know very well that Queen's Consorts is on every macro as it does spawn. So what's Definitely. next? There's only one camp left on the map. It's going to be pretty straightforward. They want to fight over this. Dread Pirate take this fight. Queen's Consort does not want to take this fight. Uh, they're down 20s, and there's just nothing they can do. And it looks like we've got maybe a possible hook. They have no vision on it at the moment for Dread Pirates. Oh, he's just going to walk right in. He's going to walk oh, right in. And go right out. They're going to take it really quick. They don't need to use a single ability here. They can take this so that this is a tool that no longer is going to give experience. And they might just go for a keep with this 20 lead. Uh, they, they if they might. can land one hook, this could be really interesting. They don't need to do this, though. They have double keep right now. They, they could simply just win the objective by just stalling it out. They don't need to take this fight. They don't need to go they for it. They don't need to do use these really. ultimates. They are, though. Yonner is getting oh, hooked is in. And the, oh, my God. The, the net, route. though. His health goes up very rapidly. Hollis is looking low again. Is Hollis the martyr here for his team to actually be able to get some kills? Oh my goodness. We see oh, Blaze, Blaze unstoppable. Damage. He's getting the unkillable yeah, from no. the, the Lucio, but it's not enough. Now, this I'm is losing a control four versus of my mouse. Four. Another hook going out. Now, that is a great <laughs> feign death. Feign death onto the Rexar with a little flower. Oh my god. The best thing I've seen all night. You we know do what? Have double katas for both bot and mid pushing though, and the objective is going to start off in favor of Dread Pirates. That was a interesting fight, a great feign death. I love it. Loved it. That was, you know, I feel like that was a selfish engagement by the part of Dread Pirates. They literally did not have to do that. They could have taken the camp and dipped out, and they would have had Blaze right now. You know what I mean? Uh, they were they were definitely greedy. They they had way more items. I mean, I guess both teams were pretty even on items, but they had. They had the Katas. I mean, they seriously could have just stalled the objective and they would have ended up winning this. Now, they don't have ults and they don't have Blaze. They need to just back up right now and give a decent percentage of this over to Queen's Consort. Queen's Consort, on the other hand, they need to just try to defend a little bit. They don't have any globals, so their best bet is to kind of push together with a team, leave maybe just Misha on the point to, to keep it, and then have everyone else kind of bounce around. Now, that camp is going to be annoying they're really dread pirates is back in the same position where all they have to do is stall they just need to stall right. out this fight They've, they're going to take top keep that's a bile they don't want to stall they're going for kills right away uh and we have a stun coming out maybe we too premature warden's cage comes out to lurkers not looking good he no, did get not. bounced back but he's getting out now, but he's not hollis there for his team in the back line hollis is getting damage over yeah. He ended up printing a bomb, and the net went onto Maev. Maev's everyone's just trying to get out right now. Ooh. Hollis got really low again, and top keep will go in favor of Dread Pirates, and they are chasing this down. You got the extra move. Oh my speed. God, Yonner is getting hooked by Stitches and, and Bat Mary. They they can win however they want to right now. Dread Pirates could simply just go in and push to win, or they could take the Protector. They'll be able to get the Protector before the two other people are up on Queen's yeah. Consort, and that should be game number three. So, I mean, we'll we'll see how this goes. But th remember, this is a team that was Division C last season, yeah. and they've gone from Division C in one season to going up to possibly ending out a game five series against division Oof. and in division a <laughs> another fame oh, death i'm for living the for the fame deaths holy moly it's the best there thing it is. uh anna and my are still hiding in the back they don't want to give that uh level one headhunter completion to the zuljin but zuljin doesn't care he still finished his other quest he doesn't even doesn't even matter to him at all they're, they could completely ignore the kills here and just end off the game. This is game number five and the grand finals going in favor wow. of Dread Pirates. Congratulations, G Dread Pirates. GG, <laughs> congratulations. G wow. What a time to be alive. What a time <laughs> to be alive. Absolutely incredible. I, I mean, am... that, is, that is nuts. 
I am perplexed, but in a good way. I'm so excited for them. I can't believe it. You know, I have not followed them all season. I did see them take out my team, as Hollis would say. Now that Hollis has been taken out, I mean, it's like liberation. Going from, from Division C to Division A, Dread Pirates? Hello? Oh, yeah. Champions. It's, they, they are the underdog. They were the underdogs this whole time. They came in, they took this entire thing, and they showed what no one was expecting. No one was expecting them to come out and go from Division C to then taking Division A the next game uh or the, the next season and i mean what are they, are they going to be in heroic division next season are they just I don't know. moving up i mean that's the thing is it's like they they had a lot of things to work on but they've been working together and they've been pushing forward so i really like how queen consort played on the on the maps they won they they yeah. really were doing it well but but they're expecting the team that dread pirates came out with they queen's consort they out macroed every single map but when right. it came to team fights, Dread Pirates knew exactly how to win these team fights, and so they they played it out. They they won on the maps that team fights mattered in, and they made sure to to make it count. The damage that they did that game was crazy. I mean, so much damage coming out of both Zuljin and Kalethos. Uh, yeah, just almost impossible to keep up with. That Anubrak, he tried to charge in every time. He'd cocoon someone, and then he would just die. And it's it's really rough. Grand I can't finals, believe right it. There. Yeah, that was a full five game series. I'm just, uh, the chat is hype right now. They're excited. I know that has to be rough for Queen's Consort, specifically Hollis, who has put a lot of effort into this season. But I'm just blown away. You know, that's that shows you what scrims can do, what actually studying your, your team and being just hellbent on on banning that Jaina. If you've got to ban the Jaina, ban it. Even yeah. if it's not even, if it doesn't mean anything, but any, but gets into their heads a little, it, it's, it's something. Because I've seen Sir Stiggles play the Li Ming so many times on that map that you knew that when they, they, Queen's Consort knew that he did that. So they banned the Li Ming and it was almost a bait because then Dre uh, dread pirates they got their lucio they got their blaze and apparently the stitches this this pocket pick that the this... lurker has been sitting on right uh so they got their three major pieces that they weren't even expecting they they tried to ban out everything that sir stiggles has been playing on this map and slithering one's been playing on this map and it and they still dominated with the heroes that they got. Kael'thas, 70,000 damage at the end of the game. Zul'jin, 71,000 damage at the end of the game. And Blaze, or Bat Mary, got to play his Blaze. The Lurker got to play yeah. Stitches. And Mystic finally got to play that Lucio that he's been wanting to play this whole series. So that was solid game. Um, Do you think that it would have been any years. different with, uh, with um, a Malthiel? Do you think that would have saved it? I, I felt like the Rexar didn't do anything in the team fights. I, I feel like Rexar is great on maps like Braxis and Dragonshire. Uh, would it have been different? I don't know. I think he would have melted people much faster because what happened was the Blaze and the Stitches would charge in and then they just would never die. And then like the back line would just be an Anubarak getting melted down by whichever targets he didn't cocoon. And then the Lucio would just slowly break the cocoon and then once the blaze and stitches were still alive, the cocoon was broken. Queen's consort had nothing. I really yeah. think that a nano boosted mouth ale would have melted down the blaze and the stitches early in those fights, and it would have just wiped the floor clean. Um, but it was it simply just the draft, or I mean, is that something that they haven't played before? It could be a hundred different reasons why they felt that just wouldn't work, and they wanted to go with the Rexar. I know Ember's got a good Rexar, but I just felt like that's not yeah. a map that's great for Rexar. I just, uh, I don't know. It, when you are so confident and you almost are casual after running your way through this scene in Division A like Queen's Consorts has, it can be a little humbling when you realize, wait, shit, and I'm going to use my cuss word for the day on this PG-13 stream. I actually need to try right now because we're going to lose. You know what yeah. I mean? No, and, definitely. I mean, they 
chose the Zeratul those first two maps. It feels like we've been casting for 45 days. Right. <laughs> I feel like we've seen so many Zeratuls and Mayavs coming out of Mayog that we yeah. finally were just like, all right, this entire season's over. And it's only been one day. It's been, um, I don't even know what time it is, but we saw some different picks and maybe it was because of the fact that they know how each other plays and they decide, well, maybe we'll pull this out. Well, if the only thing that worked out of pocket was that stitches and that feign death by Ember, like that to me was a hero in itself. Like, holy crap. It was the most a hilarious good thing death. I've ever seen in my life. Death. I uh, think just my concern about that is just, I mean, Blaze did 50,000 damage versus a Rexar who did 35,000. And Blaze had AOE CCs that covered the entire area. Bunkers that saved the Stitches, that saved the Zul'jin, that saved so many people. And what did Rexar bring? Like some, some brought a, a, a dog, a bear, some boars. You know what I mean? Like I mean, a I metal know. sports bra with a bear on the front of it. That's, that is, that's that what that skin true. looks like, you know? And a beautiful flower that blossoms with the feigned death. But... Looks like Bat Mary. <laughs> looks like Bat Mary is going to give us a brief interview before we wrap this up tonight, so they can celebrate. Right. Unfortunately, I do not have Bat Mary on Discord, so we will have to. We go. can go pop in the. Uh, yeah, we're the, gonna have to pop yeah, into I'm chat. Turn off my camera, and we'll uh, we'll Perfect. go into the chat. The NGS chat, right? Yeah, we're gonna go into NGS, and then I'll drag uh, I'll drag the person down. Let's go to a casting lobby so it doesn't get out of hand. Let's go to five. All right, I am not sure. One second, let me see. I will, I will drag him in. Is is that Bat Mary? Yes, it is. Is this That's Bat me. Mary? Hello. This is me. Hello. Congratulations, first of all. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. With a lot of fans in chat. Yeah, I didn't expect it, honestly. <laughs> um, they're coming out to support me in my big match. You definitely have the fan yeah. club for sure. Yep, <laughs> seems that way. So, uh, you guys are the champions of Division A. How, how much did you anticipate this being the turn turnout for tonight? I don't even know how to put questions together. So just just start talking, please. I have no questions. Paradox, <laughs> take it over. <laughs> sure, sure. So, so Bat Mary. So we've got what was the I would say the the map you guys were most worried about. Like, what was the the map or comp that you guys were most worried about getting into this game? Oof. Um, well, let's see. We were worried about Tomb, um, definitely. Uh, we had some struggles on it. Um, Infernal definitely was in our, probably the top of our uh, concerns. But um, we had plans in place, obviously, for a lot of maps, considering this was a best of five. Um, I'm just glad to see that they came together and some of our pocket picks kind of came in clutch there, um, such as our stitches. Um, that was something we've been working on. Uh, definitely surprised even me. With how behind well the scenes, out. Bat Mary? Was this behind the scenes working on stitches or in those scrims? Um, <laughs> it was a little bit behind the scenes. I don't, I think we brought them in a scrim or two. I don't remember honestly um but yeah uh we definitely had that in our pocket and we're playing with the idea um we needed we knew going into this that queen's consort was going to have the mayav zera tool they have those comps down we needed some kind of way to counter engage to get them off of us to deal with them when they dive in and that was our objective in these last couple of games. And honestly, uh, we threw the stitches out there just as a tower, uh, as like a kind of test pick. And it ended up working way better than we thought. So we ran it back in the last game, and it, apparently it was the it was the answer we were looking for. Right. It definitely worked out. So the this strategy, I felt like uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen. Well, so I, I had a question on Infernal Shrines, I believe. You had 
you had Sir Stiggles on Sylvanas and you had Flithering One on Nazebo. What was that about? Why why the, <laughs> the swap in those those positions? Slithering One is our best um Nazebo player. Um we trusted him by far the most in that department. And um Sir Stiggles is definitely able to put out a Sylvanas, so we were playing around with that. Um you know, it it could have worked if we had made it late game enough, but I think there were just too many slip ups getting there. Yeah. I, I think that was and then Tomb of the Spider Queen came out. Slithering one ended up on the Sylvanas. Just absolutely dominated. <laughs> and then yeah. the Sylvanas band came out. And then the Li Ming band came out, which I've I've seen some of your guys' scrims before, and I've seen that uh, Sir Stiggles plays that Li Ming on Volskaya a lot. Goes that yeah. goes the orb build on four and seven, and every time does really, really well. So I thought that was interesting that they've scrimmed against you so much they knew your strategies on Volskaya, but they didn't know your whole strategy and they left the blaze open. What did you feel when you <laughs> saw that blaze open? Oh, what was it like I when that blaze was open? That complete. is my main. <laughs> And it was banned or taken the entire series, and in game five, they let me have my most comfortable pick. And it just, it made me happy. <laughs> that, that's all I've got to say. And um, Slithering won on the Zul'jin. Um, I don't know if you guys caught our first playoffs match, but we were about to get knocked out then. But he, he just popped off and... <laughs> did 1v4 just about and we won the game off of that on the match point so that was something we were hoping to look for too and the stars just aligned the comps came together and we all got what we wanted for that last map nice yeah, definitely. well uh, like, hey, do you have any other questions i just i just want to <laughs> say congratulations again and just uh let you know that you're seeing a lot of um a lot of love and chat again <laughs> um, I'm just curious if you're going to make a smurf yeah. called Bat Carry because that's been referenced a couple times. <laughs> Bat Carry, Blaze Berry. Oh There's been my a lot gosh, Blaze Berry. <laughs> yeah, but uh, right. we're gonna we're gonna give it over to you to end this stream before you know we just close out a bit. So any shout outs for you or from you rather? Yeah, I mean definitely first and foremost to my team because we've come a long way. It feels like a Cinderella story. I've got my fan club. I've got Queen's Consorts. They uh, put up a hell of a fight, and we, uh, we've struggled in the past, but I'm glad that we finally, we finally had uh, a climactic game here. And, um, yeah, I give a shout-out to our subs as well. Princess, Scott, they pulled in for a few games. It's been, uh, it's been great, and Paradox for being our old coach. Nice. <laughs> Alrighty, well, but yeah. Thank you for coming in for a brief interview. I mean, yeah, Cinderella story for problem. sure. Fairy tales <laughs> do come true. It can happen to you, and it did. So, yep. uh, GGS, enjoy Definitely. your evening. Paradox, let's get back. Series. Yeah, it was fabulous, and I hope you guys, uh, you know, do come back next season. And you know, depending on how you're feeling. Maybe we'll see you in that heroic division. Maybe we'll see you in Division A still. We just uh, might. But we'll find out. Thank you, and have a fabulous evening. You too. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. All right, here we are. It's just that you and it. I back yes. again. Yep. After and... <laughs> five full games? five games that was a that was definitely a grand finals that was yeah. absolutely crazy i i loved every minute of it i think there were so many times where queen's queen's consort felt so much more confident in those fights the macro everything and then and then dread pirates just knew what they needed to do i mean it, it's it's absolutely crazy so right. uh, but uh we'll probably i i believe we have heroic division going on right now maybe we'll host them yeah, we will. Um, before we do get there, though, can you please tell the people where they can find you? Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm not Paradox. Mostly you're going to find me on YouTube. You've probably heard of me at some point. 
Uh, if anyone ever goes on Reddit and asks for some random guide, if there's a video linked, it's probably either mine or an old Kala video. Uh, but I do make a lot of content on YouTube. I am also streaming, or at least I try to, uh, at least once a week. So if you want to uh, follow me on uh, Twitch, then it is twitch.com, sorry, twitch.tv forward slash not paradox TV or my YouTube, just go youtube.com forward slash not paradox. I have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that too. Uh, you can pretty much just Google not paradox and you'll find all my stuff. So thank you so much for inviting me today, Slexia. Yeah, and it was my pleasure. You? So you guys can find me at twitch.tv slash Slexia. Um, Please do follow me. I'm fledgling here. I'm also very salty. So if you're looking for a good time while watching HOTS, maybe don't watch me, but just follow me. I mean, I do get tilted. Um, I'm happy that you accepted my invite. You can follow me on Twitter too, guys, but I don't go there. So just do if you do it if you want. It's on the screen. Uh, Paradox, you know, after meeting you, we played a couple games and I was like, all right, everyone's watching Game of Thrones. Who is going to come through with that clutch co-cast? And you stepped up to the plate. I had so much fun. Maybe we can do it again more. Um, thank you so much. I yeah. will now figure out what do I do to raid forward slash raid or exclamation yeah. raid. Yeah. Forward slash raid and then uh, and then whatever channel. Uh, yeah, Game of Thrones. I uh, I I've gotten like seven episodes in, so I don't want to watch any of these seasons until I actually watch the entire thing. So I I will have to do that much later. Yeah. Well, everyone that is still tuned in, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it was great. A great series, a great set, a great all the S words. Enjoy your evening. I'm going to see if this actually works when I click it. I do not have permission to do that, guys. So, oh, by the way, we'll just end it, see where Autohost sends it, and we'll go. All right. It. Cool. Enjoy your evening.